All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are back to playing Call of Cthulhu today, and we are continuing our Eternal Lies campaign. Got the full crew. Gesundheit, Melissa. Gesundheit. Thank I heard you. It all. I heard them all. <laughs> there, so. there are some people who have those like really small, petite sneezes, and then there's yeah. me. Nope, not Melissa. It's not. Not Melissa. There's going to be a gaggle <laughs> no. of geese outside in a moment on our front yard. So it's like a call. <laughs> it's a nature call. Uh, anyhow, we're back uh, and uh, very excited. Uh, we are, as, uh, as we've mentioned, uh, nearing nearing the end of Los Angeles. Uh, like, no, seriously, it's going to end. Los Angeles is over and a new city is going to replace it. Uh, and uh, yeah, very excited. But uh, we still got a little ways to do. Got some, some, some things. We've got some stuff on the to do list today. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. But before we dive in, why don't we meet who, who will be making some of these decisions? So Stephen, tell us about the, uh, the distinguished Pastor Wood. Pastor Wood is a evangelist and an ex Texas Ranger. He is a man of the law, both Texan law and old Testament law. And he is also a man of wrath and retribution, which he will be bringing down upon one private detective once he finds that private detective. Do you remember the private detective's name? I feel like you Jack kind Pisner. of... I, yeah, I okay. didn't want to like give... I didn't want to get too in detailed. Right, yeah. Because details, yeah, we don't like that. That's terrible, right? Okay. I don't pay attention to clues. This is called Cthulhu. Specificity, I, horrible things. I let Ashley I take the notes. That's true. <laughs> oh, I forgot to... I forgot to put the log over. Okay. All right, that's no, fine. It's fine. You all, you all got the summary. It's all good. Uh, next up, Melissa, tell us about the distinguished Marie Wynn. Sorry, I'm just running out of adjectives. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Uh, Marie Wynn is a jazz singer by train, uh, and is of late a little bit of a, uh, investigator trying to figure out what's going on and trying to figure out where, uh, when the time here in LA is going to be up and where to next. Cause she, she is kind of a person who likes to move around a lot and see different things and do different things. So, you know, she's kind of hitting that like, all right, we're next. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Do you remember uh, what drive you picked for your character? I do. Um, it has to do. do with like artistic, uh, like inspiration, artistic sensibility. Yep. So, yeah. uh, that is something. So that's something we kind of pulled over from Trailer Cthulhu, which Eternal Lies is originally a campaign for, but we're kind of converting it over to CSC. Uh, but we are going to be using drives. I haven't really come into play just yet, but they're going to be soonish, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. So, Ooh. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Yours is probably the one that's a little is is sort of the one that's kind of a little bit more out it's, in left field, you know. It is. It is. That, that's why I was kind of thinking that she's kind of done some traveling because mm -hmm. she's always trying to find like the newest sound so, and thing so that was how i spun it in my head right so the specific drive you have is artistic sens sensitivity uh and and I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing here but uh basically you are already aware of the numinous and supernatural quality of the world because that is what you seek to capture in your art your music specifically and so you have to follow that muse wherever inspiration leads so any kind of mundane concerns or down to earth pragmatic pragmatic things that kind of get in the way of your 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 hunt for inspiration that's not good. And so mechanically, what comes into play how this works in um, in trailer in, in trailer Cthulhu is that you have to you do like a stability spend basically. And so for us, it's going to be a sanity test. If you start if you if you know to, if you like knowingly and very clearly work against your drives. That's totally mm -hmm. fine. You guys have full control of your characters. You make your decisions. It's just you might suffer a little bit. Uh, that's all. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. What I'm saying is you better do some drugs so that you can be inspired. <laughs> I'm right? say, this feels like a really long road to say, say Marie do some drugs. Some nectar. <laughs> I was very disappointed. You know that vial oh, of nectar I totally that you took? It. Yeah. It's just burning a hole in your pocket. Why is it burning a hole in your pocket? That's understand. not what that's for. Yeah, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the room, there's the, like the the ghost of Jim Morrison trying to get you to going back in time. It's a, it's a weird timeline. I don't know what's going on, uh, but there you go. All right, next up, uh, my tell us about Shima. 
Uh, Sharma is your uh, 6'3 bit like linebacker student researcher who has been very excited about uh, getting our hands on Etveria's library. And uh, the fact that we're going to go and look at some of those like those books today is, is very exciting to her. It's also in finding confidence in places that she really ought not to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, that is super fun to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. It's been a really fun couple of sessions, I think, for Shima. You know, like we've it's seen, exactly. we've really seen her open up a bit in the last couple of sessions. And who knew that all it took was the Los Angeles Mafia. That's all, all that's all she needed, just to give her that extra little shove, you know? <laughs> uh, so good. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. And uh, I really it like, really you know, is. I really like talking like Johnny. So I like, and like, thank, I think thank I, you for indulging me. Of course, that was awesome. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, I think, I can't remember if I said this on, on air or if I said this afterwards, but the first person to die basically could play Johnny as a player character. So... If anybody wants to just throw past her wood out a window, <laughs> three <laughs> HP left. It won't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely won't. All right. Next up, uh, we got Ashley. Ashley, tell us about Dr. Beverly Key. She is our professor of anthropology. And as a professor, uh, she came into the game totally as a skeptic. So some of these things that Shima kind of leans into and believes in still really doesn't click with her, but she's kind of, she's definitely pulling at these strings to try and prove that as false. And, and again, prove the grounds of reality of no, this science is facts. This is what I have. And um, so we've been op- presented with the opportunity for lots of books of Echevera, Echeveria's library. Uh, and Girl is foaming at the mouth for these. Let me tell you. So uh, oh, that, that that's a different thing. Oh, it, that's the rabies. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I get Ed, confused. Ed gave you rabies. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird night. It was a weird night. <laughs> there was, you know, who knows? She took drugs. Uh, yeah. Well, that's. I'm, I'm glad that you you mentioned every like your your preamble there because that does align pretty well with the drive uh, that I have for you uh, for for Bev scholarship is the uh, uh, yep. basically the idea of uncovering the truth, the search for truth, uh, which dovetails pretty well with Shima's, which is more about curiosity because uh, that's what yours was. But they but def, they definitely dovetail together very nicely, which makes perfect sense. And I think that's why we pair team. so yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. she's for curious. Sure. And then Bev gets a hold of it and she's like, I want to rip this shit apart and find out what the truth is. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Uh, okay. She's, she's Good a to little know. crazy. Good it's to gonna know. get more weird. And then uh, finally, uh, we have got the most trustworthy, most dignified, most most true to his his fiance. Yeah. Uh, we have Patrick Price, who denied who just denied Olivia Clarendon to top starlet of Hollywood right now said, no Lauren, tell us about Patrick. Patrick Pressy, a dashingly handsome barber. Moral righteousness runs thickly in my blood. And he's only got four fingers on one of his hand, but that's okay. Apparently Even with four fingers. Mm-hmm. I'm the great greatest with my hands as, as the great, Shane Falco once said, pain heals, chicks dick scars, and glory lasts forever. It's one of my favorite Keanu. quotes of all time. It's Keanu. I yeah. love you, that know that, you know what it's from, right? You know what it's from? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. Washington Sentinels. Oh, so good. Um, <laughs> such a dumb movie, but I love that quote. I say it all the time. I was actually <laughs> just talking about it a couple of weeks ago, how I need to rewatch it. It's, like it, it's got some charm to it. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Young John Favreau in there in a small role. Yes. Yes. As uh, I think he was like a linebacker or something like that, wouldn't he? Yep, yeah. Yep. Oh, and uh, and uh, the guy from The Office who played Pam's like crap. Roy. Roy is in that as the tight end. Yeah. Yeah. As the yeah. death guy. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Yep. Orlando Jones. Yeah. Gene Hackman. Orlando Jones. Man, I love Orlando Jones. Orlando, um, we're solely off, off right now, but Orlando Jones for me, there's the funniest. He had the funniest I used to laugh so hard at his old 7-Up commercials. 
And there was like this one commercial where he would walk down the street and he'd have a t-shirt on and it said make seven on the front and up yours on the back. And so he'd be walking down the street and he's like, make seven up yours. And then you'd hear like people who are walking past and only see the back like, yeah, same to you, buddy. And he's like, same to me. <laughs> and I just, I'm sorry. I just indulge me in my, I love that as a commercial so much. Orlando Brown. I love him I in evolution. I, yeah, I think that's another so hidden gem. <laughs> the ass <laughs> When the mosquito the thing eats, uh, Yeah. Yep. Orlando, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's fantastic. Evolution is really fun, really fun, uh, really fun movie. Uh, okay. Well, now that we've gone, uh, we've gone down that route, let's go ahead and dive back in to Call of Cthulhu, where there will be no types of silliness. This is this this is, this is a serious campaign, guys. Game face on. Last time, Pastor Wood and Beth headed over to the magnificent Villa Auction Services to learn about Ramon Echeverria's estate. Pastor Woods state his his state his demeanor one might say his odor uh, offended some of the workers at that auction services I said some I didn't say I did I said some might say that uh, but it was but you not, you were playing the NPCs that's a fair point but I, I get lost in the role and I really just I'm trying to be true <laughs> method actor to those characters <laughs> method game master <laughs> <laughs> uh bev you still were able to learn some stuff which is great you got some interesting details the most notable things you learned were that uh etcheveria had a, ver a vast array of of, uh, of rare books most of which were purchased by samson trammell a name that has come up multiple times now uh throughout your investigation here in los angeles uh and uh there was also and this was kind of curious that there was a smaller collection of books that were purchased by ucla's history department uh which didn't come up when you were last at yeah. that history of the apartment. Isn't that curious? Though, um, I don't think we brought up Echeverria at all. We only were speaking to him about George Ayers. That's fair. That's fair. So. That's fair. Uh, and if you go speak to him, I'm going to have to completely butcher a Scottish accent again and basically make it Australian. So it'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> elsewhere, Shima, Marie, Patrick, you all were exploring a nectar den with Johnny. Uh, the artists who they had like no shame, no inhibition. They were engaging in sex acts right there in front of you as they were clearly high on nectar. And they also tried to tempt most of you. I think all of you with, with nectar itself, all of you said no. Uh, so go ahead and make a sand test. Marie. Uh, in the kitchen, uh, Johnny and Patrick, you found another individual who didn't seem to have the same kind of reaction. He was much more violent. Uh, you can tell that he had been in a, a dozen, uh, you know, a dozen or more fights or so. And, Ultimately, you got into another one with him, and it ended with Johnny stabbing him multiple times with a dirty kitchen knife in front of everybody. Uh, Patrick, you accidentally came in contact with a syringe, uh, and that injected a little bit of nectar into your system, and you quickly started to feel the effects of the drug. Uh, you you kind of got overwhelmed with this like warm sense of, of pleasure and this desire to then extend that feeling to your friends and fellow investigators. You weren't violent about it, but you did get extraordinarily forward and, and sexual and sensual with all of the people that were in the room. So Marie, Shima and Johnny, uh, eventually Tony tied you up, uh, to keep you from doing anything reckless. Uh, before leaving, uh, I think Marie, you said you took a sample of uh, of some. Uh, we had a vial of nectar. You also found a record that had been playing that had two untitled songs referencing an artist named Luz, and had a recording label that uh, was for Mexico, Mexico City. Uh, you took down a few lyrics. Pastor Wood was later able to translate as he is fluent in Spanish, and they were basically my heart, my love, my name, my mouth. All of them repeated over and over uh, with the backing of a, of a Spanish guitar. Back at the hotel, Johnny and Pastor Wood, you had a very awkward first meeting, but cooler heads prevailed. Uh, Patrick, you came down off your high, but you also uh, were dealing with this sort of like fleeting scent of moss uh, in your nose. And you had this haunting feeling uh, that while under the trance in that artist co-op, you could very easily have been persuaded to do all manner of horrible, terrible things. Fortunately, none of those things happened. Uh, in the lobby, we saw a very sweet goodbye between Shima and Johnny. Shima handed over a letter for Massimo Okone. And Johnny gave her his flask filled with gin, bad gin, which she had never tried before. But nonetheless, she has some gin now. Uh, and Pastor Wood, at one point, having not heard back from your wife after you had sent her a telegram, you sent another, continuing to uh, warn her of such danger. And then the session ended with Patrick returning to his own hotel and you all trying to get some well-deserved rest. It has been a very long night for all of you. So 
let's get started then. Ready? What do I want to do? Get a little music going. What do I want? Let's do... Let's do this one. Okay. Library, right? We open. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Melissa, please. Back off. What did I say? Serious faces. What are we doing here? Okay. We open and we see a dusty plain. Uh, we see some wind kicking back some high grass. Uh, we see um, some clouds in the air, in the sky. Uh, the sign of maybe distant thunderstorm. Uh, it's not currently raining. Uh, all around us, we see a couple of these tents, these large tents, and a couple smaller ones as well. We see a handful of vehicles, these uh, trucks and cars and such, 1920s, 1930s, like old, older models. We see lingering folks here and there dressed in women, dressed in sundresses, men dressed in, in suits, but with the, you know, with the coats off and everyone kind of dabbing uh, at their foreheads or, uh, or at the backs of their necks from what apparently is uh, a decent amount of heat. Um, eventually, we see one of the flaps of one of these uh, one of these tents open up. It's a very large tent. Uh, one might say a revivalist tent. And we see uh, as the the flap opens up, we see a couple people start to venture over towards it and go inside, and they start to take these seats uh, on either side. These little uh, kind of foldable wooden chairs here and there. Uh, they don't look matching. It's just whatever's there. And people on the left, people on the right. And there's an aisle down the middle. We see an elevated, a very slightly elevated stage, all put together. Uh, and pastor, there is a a very um, familiar woman to you. Um, what does your wife look like? If you could describe her for a minute. Uh, pastor Wood's wife, Carmela. Uh, mm -hmm. wears very traditional conservative clothing, uh, traditional as in Mexican clothing. Uh, she is uh, from Mexico. She's half Mexican. Uh, and he met her while he was working on the border. She's got long black hair. She normally keeps it up in a bun. Uh, she's got some lines in her face uh, from age, just like Pastor Wood. Uh, they are about the same age. But, uh, yeah. And so... We watch as she turns to the crowd and she says, now, thank you all for coming. We're so very pleased to have you. And I have wonderful news. My my husband will be extraordinarily delighted as we just got news that he has returned from his travels out to the West. He was on very important business. Uh, oh, here he is now. And we look over and she's like motioning uh, in the direction of the side of this stage. And we see there is Pastor Wood. Pastor what what did would you say your normal getup is like? What do you normally look like when you're doing one of your sermons? Uh, he tries to be very unassuming about what he looks like, uh, and he uh, would never actually admit this, but he leans into the poor common man uh, mm -hmm. outfit. So his clothes, uh, while they're nice, they're clean, they're pressed. Uh, you can tell they've been mended repeatedly. Uh, there, there are several places where they're, they've been stitched up together. Uh, but normally it's just trousers, pants, sus suspenders, and his hat. Uh, same as always. And you can see everyone gets out of their chairs and they're like, and they're kind of clapping like, oh, praise, praise. Welcome back, pastor. Welcome back. And everyone's extraordinarily happy to see you look around the crowd. And like, maybe you recognize a, a face or two. Maybe your children are somewhere. You can hear their voices playing but can't quite see their faces your brother may be nearby as well a couple friends common common folk regulars um and your wife carmela is like motioning you up motioning you up and she's like he's gonna give us the sermon today we're uh, so overjoyed if y'all y'all can just settle down now folks settle down and she kind of comes over and she gives you a uh, kind of a very a, a very gentle like kind of peck on the cheek and uh, and you kind of move over or start going through your usual rigmarole, whatever you might have had planned. Every now and then, though, you feel like a shaking, like a like a rumbling, like the, the very slightest bit, as if maybe the floorboards of the stage are crooked or are creaking or are giving way. 
no one else seems to notice your wife's kind of standing on the stage as well off to the side. She's just kind of looking on and, you know, she's just smiling and being like this, this sort of uh, extraordinarily supportive spouse. And then like you start hearing like a sounds that almost feels like distant thunder. And then you can see that the, the whole tent begins to shake, like the actual canvas itself. And you can even see the people in the rows. They're shaking as well. But none of them seem to respond. It seems to just be you that notices this. What do you do in this situation? What do you think Pastor Wood would do? I think uh, he would probably try to continue with his sermon, but he would be distracted looking down. If he thinks it's the stage, he would start like uh, kind of lightly stomping on a few of the boards to see if the stage is put together properly because uh, he's been the one to put it up and put it down dozens of times. So I think he would just be like trying to keep talking, but he would just occasionally pause looking down and then come yeah. back and so on. And everything seems to be in order. Everything sticks together. You don't break anything. Everything stays sturdy. Without the entirety of the sermon, those rumbles get a little bit louder, get a little bit rougher. But you stay true. You stay focused. You're a professional. And eventually, they seem to fade for a moment. We go through the entirety of the sermon. People come up. They thank you afterwards. You, Everyone ventures outside. There's these smaller tents where refreshments are being given out. And your wife kind of takes you around, starts introducing you to some people, some, some new parishioners. And then the ground shakes again, like violently so to the point where you almost stumble, but no one else seems to struggle. You look off in the distance, there's a town nearby, and you just see, it just falls, building after building. You look off to the to the east, and you can see far in that distance, there's like a water tower sticking up, and you just see it teeter over and crash. You can see you know, half a mile away, there's some some vehicles on this dirt road and you can, you can see them. They're just driving along, driving along until like a crack opens up in the ground and the vehicles just kind of collapse into it. No one seems to react to it whatsoever. You seem to be the only person noticing this. No one is panicking whatsoever. You watch as the sky in the distance that had been like these, these thunder clouds begins to get darker and darker and you see the crackling of lightning you even see what looks like funnel clouds beginning to form but after a moment you realize it's not funnel clouds it's not tornadoes forming because they're this these sort of discolored and somewhat disjointed dips in the clouds themselves which grow darker and then you watch the horizon where the town used to be and you see these this jagged row of rock and debris as you look closer, you realize it's not debris. It's not rock. It is these like sharpened under row of teeth. And you're just looking out at this gigantic fanged mouth. And it's getting closer and closer. Thunder crack, closer, thunder crack, closer, thunder crack. One after the other. And there's not a single person that seems to be reacting to it. What do you do, Pastor? I immediately grab Carmela because she's the closest and I start yelling for Obi, my son, uh, looking around for him frantically, just knowing that I can't actually stop this, but trying to like cover them and get them to a safe place. You grab Carmela and she's like, darling, what do you stop it now? Stop it now. Quit being str I know you're tired, but we have things to do. We have we have new per parishioners I want to introduce you to. This over here is Mr. and Mrs. Fleming. And Carmela, not around. now. Where's Obi? Darling, Obi's fine. He's with your brother, everything. And he and she just kind of motions off in the distance, and you see a group of people. And like there's a child. There's what you assume is your brother, and they're kind of Looks like they're just throwing a ball back and forth in front of a, a vehicle. Clench onto her wrist and start running towards. Oh, uh, goodness. This is, stop it this instant. She just yanks her arm from you. You're embarrassing me. Now. And then she grabs your wrist. And with a surprising amount of strength, wrenches it back to the point where you feel a pop in your shoulder. And when you turn, 
Now, I would like to introduce you to more of our parishioners. As I was saying, this is Mr. and Mrs. Fleming. This over here, Mr. Alfred Rutherford, he has donated a significant portion. And this right here, this here is Mr. Jack Pisner. Jack, say hello to my husband. And there you see the face of Jack Pisner. And he's like, <laughs> and as he starts to cackle, you see his mouth grow wide. You see something start to drip from the teeth and from the fangs. And as he leans closer, you wake up. You're in the bed of a hotel. You're in California. And I need you to roll a sand test. I don't want to. While you're doing that, oh, belated good. thank you to our friends over at Tales of Myth and Mayhem for the raid. Really do appreciate it while he's doing that. And if you haven't followed them, please do. They're running. They just started running Massive Near the Third Tap right before our stream. So you can literally get like four or five straight hours of like crazy, epic, like Lovecraftian mythos stuff in on your Saturdays from now on. How'd you do, buddy? Eight under 58. Okay. Take one point of sand. When you look out the window, you realize it is early in the morning, very early to the point where it's it's light out. But it's it's still it's still not quite too busy on the street. You're in the room by yourself now as Patrick is not here. But as you look around, you are coated in sweat. What are you doing? Well, I feel like 10 pounds of manure in a five pound bag. Uh, I suppose I'll go jump in the shower. OK, so we cut from there as Pastor Wood cleans himself up. And one by one, we start checking in with our various other groups of people. Uh, the women who are still in the same hotel, Marie, Beverly, Shima, each of you, one after the other, you wake up, come out into the shared, uh, kind of shared kind of living space in between your individual rooms, go through your normal, uh, your normal step-by-step -step, uh, wake up process, whatever it is that you do. We see Patrick in his solo room on the other side of town we can see him waking up or should i say jerry waking up all by himself um what would you say you all do for the day what what would we say is the plan it's early in the morning everyone's gotten a rest you can take a hit point back you've gotten a good night's rest most of you what's the plan what just for a nice day in town we'll okay. slowly head over all right. So the first thing we see is Patrick. You're getting dressed here and there. You go to step out of your of your hotel room. You can see there's a newspaper right there on the ground for you. You see there's a cover on it about Olivia Clarendon, various other things. You can just see it there. Maybe you pick it up. Maybe you kick it back into your room. Who knows? But we see Patrick moving about, getting down into his car, getting in his vehicle, driving across town. When we pull up back at the hotel where the rest of his investigators are uh, are staying, we'll check back in with the women who now have, have fully woken up. What are the three of you doing as we await the guys? I would say that uh, Marie wants to, basically anytime we come back to the room, anytime we kind of wake up in the morning, she always wants to sort of go over to that box that we purchased and like locked things into. So she's just kind of always checking and making sure that everything is where it should be. And so it's sort of this weird thing where like they wake up and she'll kind of like wave, you know, either Shima or Beverly to like go, you know, kind of use the bathroom, you know, kind of powder up, do whatever you want to do first. And she's kind of just always going to just double check that okay. everything is where it should be. You peek inside your lockbox and yeah, you still have the same stuff that you had uh, that you got from Douglas Henslow's farm versus me his uh, estate back in Savannah and maybe a few of the things that you had from the safety deposit box here in Los Angeles all of that's still there none of it's been mm -hmm. touched as far as I know unless you tell me otherwise this is where it is you're keeping it here you're not bringing it with you and so all of that's there you go through you inventory everything the strange kind of slab of stone some of the writings of Henslow those types of things close back up Whoever has the key or the combination, everything still seems to be in order. No one seems to have messed with it at all. 
And so uh, Marie will kind of breathe a little sigh of relief. And I would say that, that when she did that, she would have kind of taken back out the camera. Um, and so, you know, kind of just like, I assume this is probably going to be kind of top of our list today, finding out what, what is inside of this. Yes. Uh, I, it's part of it. My goal today is getting those books. Of course. Absolutely. And uh, like it's... Beverly is like walking around. She's like taking out her curlers as she's going. <laughs> Shama, meanwhile, has been up for like three hours already and is coming back like red faced and sweaty from having worked out and, and she's nice. kind of wiping her forehead. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, we're, we're heading to, to UCLA. And, and she generally has more energy in this. How exactly are we intending on getting these photos developed? Well, I I think there are... If if it has on it what I think it has on it, I don't necessarily want that attached to me. I don't mind uh, working with a fellow student at UCLA and saying it's for an occult project or anything, something like that. That's a very good question. Actually, I it, it seems that we we want to somehow distract whomever we would be able to loop into this task, and and we could ask uh, Pastor Wood, perhaps with his law enforcement background, he might be able to come up with a story that you know he needs these photographs to be um, developed very quickly, um, but. They're clearly related to a crime, and so it would be inappropriate for anyone else to see the pictures. And so perhaps he could kind of strong arm someone into to not looking at them. That that could be one option, um, I suppose. Yeah. And- or I could try to be distracting if uh, Pastor Wood continues to not want to go to UCLA for don't quite know why he seems to have an aversion to that place, but it does seem like he avoids it whenever we've discussed about possibly going. So I suppose, you know, I could always uh, go in that direction as she's like picking out what she might wear for the day. She's kind of making a choice around, well, if I have to be kind of a potential distraction, then I uh, should kind of choose. Do you want something from my closet? Because I, Bev's got some stuff that's a little bit saucier, <laughs> I'd like to think. And Marie would assume not, because we're still sort of, you know, she's done some shows and whatnot, and so she's it was initially sort of not thinking that sort of the professor would have those things in her clothing, and then kind of as she's looking through your trunk, she's oh my, well, that that might just. Some I would think say that green number still might waters, just do the you. trick. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you do, Doctor Key? And she just <laughs> kind of like winks at you before she goes back into the bathroom because she's doing her makeup now. Okay. But, um, and we'll say shortly thereafter. This is it fair to say the guys show up, or maybe you all meet down in like the lobby restaurant or something like that. Is that fair? Yeah. I'd fair. also be checking for messages from my wife. Uh, I did rule this ahead of time. There are still no messages. I sent another one. Mm-hmm. And you can see I, the... I'm actually oh. going to go make a phone call too, so maybe I bump it to password. At the, okay. At the That's desk. fine. We can say we're both downstairs by the desk that kind of handles this and Pastor Wood, you're writing out your telegram, etc. And whoever's working there, it's just like, well, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, same, same, same person. Same, same. Same address. Yes. Understood. Understood. And they kind of look over. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Can I can I help you as well? Uh, and uh, she passes over the number that Johnny had shared yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, may, may I call this number? Uh, well, yes, ma'am. But if you'd like a little bit of privacy, we do have the booths over there in the corner. And you point over and you can see that there are four wooden uh, stand booths. Uh, along one wall and inside of them there is a small little place to sit and there's a phone and each one of them 
is four is a little bit of privacy. It's not like a ton, but it's better than standing here at the desk. Uh, and she gets kind of uncomfortable. And, um, do do I have to pay for it now, or uh, can I pay for it later? Or we can put it to your room if that's what you like. Oh, okay. And then she reaches down into her uh shoe and pulls out the door that she has in there for a password check for days. She's like, um. This should cover it, no? <laughs> um, yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> because you had worked out this morning, so you kept it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I would like to think it's a different shoe. I don't think she runs in her. Fair in enough. Her. Yeah, Fair but enough. it's still foot money. <laughs> yeah, it's foot it money. is still foot money. It's still foot money. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so you call, uh, she does, you, you she call does Johnny? go to the booth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you call, call Johnny. Number. And at like, a certain Hi, point... Hi, this is Miss Shima. We're on calling for Johnny's Tompadano. You're calling for Johnny? Uh, yeah, hang on. I think he's... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think he's here. Hey, Johnny, you got a phone call. It's some... Yeah, it's some broad. It's a... What are you getting all mad at me for? What's it, Johnny? Why are you getting... Not nah, it! And then you hear like a like a little bit of a scuffle. And then the phone gets taken. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, uh, uh, this is uh, this is Johnny. Uh, hi, Johnny. It's it's Shima. Hey, um, Shima. Hey, I, hi, how you doing? Good morning. Morning. I uh, I hope it's okay that I'm uh, that I'm calling you so oh, soon. No, I didn't like expect it so quickly. But no, I mean, I'm I'm happy though. It's nice to nice to hear your voice. Uh, so it. I had so much fun saying, well, I don't know if fun's the right word, but I, I found it so interesting to see part of your life yesterday. I thought maybe you might want to see, I'd, I'd like to show you around, you know, it's not my university, but it's an, it's, it's a university and I can maybe show you a lecture, maybe show the library and show you where I do some oh, training. Uh... So, I mean, would you like to meet me at UCLA for lunch at like one? And oh, I can meet you uh, at the library? Oh, I gotta... Oh, I, normally I would... Yeah, normally, but I gotta... Mr. Orcone has got me on a task today. Uh, I'm gonna be gone, like, out of town for, like, all day. You know, I'm not gonna be back to pretty late. Um, okay. Uh, but, like, like maybe, maybe, like, tomorrow or, like, before... I know you said you gotta leave, but before you leave, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can call you and, and let you know. I, I don't know when I'm going to leave. Uh, that's, I, I'm hey, working with Dr. you can stay as long as you like. We got, we got plenty of room out here, you know? Plenty of room. <laughs> no, I, I, I have to go back, you know, have a scholarship. And she says that like he knows what to yeah, do. He's like, yeah, I understand. Yeah, we got tons <laughs> of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, and uh, she sounds very disappointed. And she's like, "Oh, okay. Well, I'll I'll call you later." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like this later this week. You know, just give me a call. We'll we'll, we'll do we'll, we'll do lunch. That's what they say out here. They say you do lunch. You don't have lunch. You do lunch. We'll do lunch. Do lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, right. very awkwardly. <laughs> Say it. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, all I'd like to imagine that, like, Patrick walks in right at this point. <laughs> She's like on the phone, a little red face. He's like, Hey, Johnny. Like, because they're like near the lobby, so it would make sense. Patrick coming right. in. <laughs> okay. So, we'll say that eventually Marie and Bev join the rest of you down the lobby area. Yeah. Yep. And you guys tell me, what are we doing? So, today, UCLA? Well, I wouldn't mind uh, talking to this uh, Trammel character. I was just you, saying what? to the ladies upstairs that I did not think that you were going to uh, take the invitation to UCLA yet again. Might I throw out the offer and you you can decline of course but we we would like to get these pictures developed and i do believe that 
a law enforcement background might be able to convince someone to do the developing for us without looking at the pictures. And you do have that law enforcement background and, and you, I, I think you could be intimidating. I, I think perhaps you don't have to though, if you'd rather go talk to Mr. Trim. Well, Miss Wynn, I, I don't believe you're trying to insult me, but I also don't believe you're trying to compliment me. So I'm a little confused as what the intent of that statement was. But uh, if we believe that would be for the best interest of the investigation, of course, I would do it. But my law enforcement background does not have much bearing out here. I'm a Texas Ranger. I'm... Los Angeles Police Department is a far cry. You got well, I close as a personal investigator. That is sort of wouldn't what that we be are, dishonest? But that is sort of what we've been hired for, is it not? I suppose so, but Jack Pisner is a private detective as well, and I and he's a. Pardon my language. A piece of shit. You guys hear the sound of crashing plates and glasses, and you look over towards uh, towards the actual lobby, not the lobby area, but the restaurant, and you see uh, there's like a waitress and a man who kind of bumped into each other, and they both just start laughing at like the the strangeness of the situation, and they start like picking some stuff up off the ground, but there's like this laughter that just sort of cackles down the hall, cackles towards over by the lobby. And you can see it's from them. You can definitely see that neither of them is Pisner. But it's like right as you mention his name. Laughter. Ooh. Language, yeah. Dr. Key. Well, that was did poorly a, did apologize. Oh. Well, so the, the, the backup plan, though, and she's she kind of looks at her outfit. The, the, the backup plan, of, of course, is, is just a feminine distraction, perhaps, of this individual. And Which they can develop and... Is its know. own pros and cons, because I do believe it is a very involved process. So I do worry I, if, I, if you do too successfully distract them, that it could destroy the photographs. Oh dear! Well, we certainly and wouldn't want that. Just look at her; it, she looks extra darling today. Well, that and it is a sin to lead another into temptation. So then, it definitely sounds like perhaps you will do the photography for us. Oh, you're speaking to me. Yes. Well, as I said, if that's what we believe would be best for the investigation, I suppose I could try my hand at it. Uh, Jerry, Patrick, uh, and, and <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Patrick. Patrick, I guess so. Jerry Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not that old, Dr. Key. Uh, what are, what are your plans for today? Plans for today? Well, uh, I don't know how, how much use I'm going to be out of school. I'm not much of a study man. Well, perhaps I should go with you, Lynn. Perhaps you could go together. We have to find out where this nectar is coming from. What I've heard, it's involved with water, and we have more info on Trammel. We have very, we have his address. We do you have his address? We do have Walker's phone number, which is to Trammel's address, which is peculiar. So might perhaps... peruse the place a bit, see what's going on, what what he's like. Well, it sounds like things are decided then. A trip out to Pasadena, it sounds like. And a trip to the university. Okay. All I know is I will hopefully get my hands on some books. Okay. Who is going to UCLA? Sounds like girls. Okay. Pastor would like follow the group until like Patrick starts <laughs> heading towards the other car. And then he just goes with Patrick. Okay, so Bev and Shima for sure. Marie, were you gonna go to UCLA with them? Or were you going to Pasadena? Seeing that Pastor Wood did not Wood go to UCLA. Um, sorry, what'd you say? 
I was going to say Westwood or Pasadena. So. Oh, yeah. Um, seeing that Pastor Wood did not go to UCLA, then Murray will go to UCLA. Okay. So then we uh, go in our separate directions. Uh, each of you gets into a car, drives off. Again, you all know exactly where you're going, so it's no trouble finding it. Uh, so we'll say a little time passes. Uh, we can see the, we'll start with, with UCLA. We can see the familiar now campus sprawling out before us. These almost kind of Mediterranean Roman Gresham kind of, uh, kind of buildings, um, as they dot here and there. Uh, we can see that it is a weekday. It is a school day, so to speak. So it is a very busy campus and you can see there's plenty of people coming and going, moving between various buildings and such, but you shouldn't have too much difficulty. You do because of your, uh, tour that you received, uh, from Ed, you do know your way around fairly decently. You're not completely oblivious to which way to go. Uh, so as far as I understand it, you have, uh, you have your, yeah. So you have the, the film that you're interested in doing. Um, you do know that there's not so much an art department yet, but there are plenty of art courses and artists who seem to be practicing here. Uh, so there are places that you can be directed to. Uh, you can look at uh, essentially like these kiosks here and there, or you can just ask a person or two and they'll direct you to the section of campus where it seems like uh, there's like this burgeoning art department. Uh, so there's mixtures of theater students, musicians, artists, some outside, although it is overcast today. And you can see that it's definitely calling for rain. Uh, but nonetheless, there's people out here playing uh, singing, playing music. You can see some of them are drawing, sketching, etc. There's also uh, the history of the department, uh, where you had already met Professor Hamish McDunn, the department chair, where I know you wanted to follow up on um, on the books. Um, what about, uh, and I wasn't sure if you all brought this up, but I know that Marie, you had the vial, and I know you had mentioned about being curious with that. Was there a follow up you were going to do with that as well, or is Marie just kind of keeping that to herself? Um, Marie would be interested in seeing if, um, trying to get a, like chemistry, some kind of a, you know, kind of what are the components, uh, type gotcha. of research. Uh, okay. So I, so then basically you have kind of three things you want to do. What would we say that the, you start with, do we go art? Do we go history? Do we go chemistry? What order do we want to do that in? Uh, would we want to start with the known and start with, uh, Professor McDunn? Yes, yeah, because okay. especially if like we get access to those books, Beverly will want to start reading those books. Okay, we've talked about this before, um, but you would uh, like Ashley, you would know this. Like it, it's yeah, it's reading of a involved. book is like between yeah. scenario because that's how long it's going to take. It's not something yeah. that you're gonna you can skim them here and there and get a general gist, but like in terms that's of that's what really I mean is like them, just yeah. skim them. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so if that's the case, we'll say the three of you make your way over to the history department. You head on up. And you see the familiar face of Samantha Burnish, uh, who you've met before. Uh, and she recognizes you immediately. And she looks at the three of you uh, and she say, Is there, um, well, uh, I did not expect to see the three of you again, but is there something I can do for you? Were you uh, uh, able to find out all you need about uh, Mr. Ayers? Oh, yes. Uh Thankfully, no further contact is needed on that end, thankfully. Um, mm. We're here to just follow up on some books from an estate sale that uh, Dr. Hamish has acquired. And follow up in what context? To see if I could perhaps uh, borrow them or read them. Any of you with a decent amount of psychology would recognize a little bit of kind of a wince um, as you throw out the idea of you borrowing something from Mr. or from Professor McDunn. Well, um, uh, okay, I understand. Let me see if he is in and can see you. Uh, he does have uh, an administrative meeting later this afternoon, so I do know that he does not have a great deal of time today. Understand. Uh, one moment and she goes over to the door knocks on it you hear like the gruff sound of mcdunn like what is it and then she goes inside and you hear rumble, 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 rumble. 
Uh, if anyone would like to roll a listen test, you are welcome to do so. Yes, please. <laughs> Go right ahead. Uh, Marie listens yeah. unsuccessfully. Okay. Okay. 19 under 50. Shima, you, with a, with a hard success, you hear, um, Professor, the women, the friends of um, Mr. Exley have returned. They're, they're asking about, um, did you say Echeverria or did you just say an estate sale? I just said an estate sale. Okay. They're asking about books um, that you might have acquired uh, from an estate sale. And you, and, and you can probably hear him say, um, did they mention Mr. Ayer's name again? Uh, well, well, I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to get too far down the road until I knew if you had time. And you know, uh, that blasted Exley always bringing strays in. Uh, honestly, honestly, Samantha, I can't believe you were ever involved with him. You said you were not going to bring that up anymore. We were going to drop it. And so, like, there's a little bit of back and forth, but eventually, f- send them in I five minutes. Um, and she comes back out, like, uh, he has five minutes for you. Please, um, and she nearly kind of like bumps into Shima as like she comes out. Uh, but Shima, you heard all of that, no issues. Mm-hmm. You go inside and you see this stuffy, but well, you know, well organized uh, office of, of Professor Hamish McDunn. And he's, and you can see he's getting ready. He's got like a satchel on his desk and he's kind of pulling some books and stuff off the, uh, off some of his shelves here and there, and he's kind of tucking it in a way. And he's like, "Lady, it's a wonderful, wonderful to see you again. I'm so, uh, it's, it's so wonderful. Um, I do not have a great deal of time, however. The, um, there are some budgetary meetings I have to get to this afternoon. So, um, what can I do for you? Uh, I'll cut to the quick of it then. Uh, I understand. I have a list of books that you inqu- uh, have acquired from an estate sale on behalf of UCLA from the Echeverria estate that I would like to." review you watch as anybody would like to roll a psychology test better you do yeah so he's like tucking stuff in he's pulling some stuff out of his desk he's taking some stuff off off the shelves um as i would say sissy may um with your (laughs) extreme success Nice. Uh, yes. And Shima, you would get a vibe too, but Sissy May, without a doubt, <laughs> you can see he nearly trips over himself, uh, as you mentioned, the Echeverria estate sale. And he nearly trips over himself. And like as he goes to put the like one of the books inside of his satchel, he basically misses it and it slides so that the the papers themselves kind of over the lip itself and it kind of splits a bit. And you can hear the bending and tearing of paper, which Beverly, I would imagine it would sound like nails yeah. on a chalkboard to yeah. you. Um, I am. Um, <clears throat> uh, I see. Uh, well, um, and this is, um, uh, <clears throat> is there a particular reason, uh, that you are inquiring? Uh, it is. We are doing some, you could call it private investigating upon a uh, plentiful beneficiary's behalf. And it Mm -hmm. is of the utmost importance that we do get to review these. Um, well, I am, I am very sorry to say that they are a, uh, they are part of a special collection, uh, here at UCLA. They're in, uh, very, uh, delicate, um, uh, circumstances. They are not, uh, they are, uh, that is to say, uh, perhaps come back next week and we could set up some time uh, for you to view them in a controlled uh, situation. As you know, some uh, some texts need uh, to be, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, well, is it hot in here? Uh, it feels uh, quite warm today, a little humid, don't you think? Uh, uh, anyhow. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, are you, are you, are you doubting the ability of, of Dr. Key to be able to, to uh, properly handle a, a manuscript of value? This is what she does. Are you, well, I, I, that's I, a I, separate I, question. Well, Why exactly are you so nervous, sir? Me? Well, the budgetary meetings today, uh, it's going to set uh, our, our funding for the next uh, three years. And I want to make sure that I attend it with uh, <clears throat> a certain amount of, uh, I have to do a presentation, you see, uh, 
and I, on, uh, yes, uh, on uh, our it faculty. Seems you uh, did to seem that... rather fine until we mentioned Echeverria. Oh, uh, well, I can't really. Uh, coincidence, I would imagine. Just pure coincidence, uh, of course. Uh, now, if you would be so kind, uh, I very much uh, need we to. We do get have to... three meeting, uh, three minutes remaining in this in this potential meeting, so I do oh, request uh, that time. Uh, well, uh, I <clears throat> I see. Uh, I. What exactly was your relationship with Echeverria? How did well, you come across to to getting these books on behalf of UCLA? I never met the man, to be honest. I'm aware of his reputation as a philanthropist. And these yeah. particular titles that you have gotten do not align with your normal uh, area of expertise. Uh, that is incorrect, madam, I am afraid to say. I believe your uh, knowledge of the extensiveness uh, of my research interest have, is sorry, limited. Sorry, I flip-flopped you with George Ayers. He's a blight on my day. Uh, well, but, uh, it's in truth, Mr. George Ayers is far more, uh, I would say, uh, the expert on such matters uh, than I. Uh, it was just passing curiosity. And... So you but, have read the books yourself, then. Uh, where are they being kept? Uh, well... They are on the grounds, of course. Uh, they are in, um, well, we have top men keeping an eye on them. Yes. In the library, in your office? Um, I believe that it's been five minutes. Uh, well, now, if, uh, uh, if you don't Sh mind. Shaiva steps up and like, gets to her sort of full height. And oh, oh uh, I, I imagine she's, yeah, she's at least in your dude. Maybe taller than than this dude. It's like, uh, professor, I'm not sure what you're worried will happen, but nothing will happen. You should tell us where the books are. Roll a check, uh, Shima. Um, I don't think we have an intimidation there skill. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Intimidate. Yeah. Intimidate. Intimidate. It is. Let's do it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Like We've it. got some boosts if you need any boosts. She you don't need, need any boosts. You're fine. <laughs> 34 under 40. Oh, uh, and you can see he just kind of like the air of a balloon gets let out. <sighs> uh, it's simply that the books are of a very... Um, uh, they're not... How do I put this? They are of a... Uh, they are not within our library. Uh, no self-respecting university would put such uh, such studies on those shelves. These are more of a eccentric tasks, as you might imagine, a, a apocryphal and. Um, uh, uh, Shoba's uh, eyes narrow because this is exactly the kind of thing she loves in Miss Yeah, we are from Miss Katonic. University, so we are more acquainted with these sort of texts. Oh, already you know. Uh, I am aware of. Well, um, <clears throat> I was hoping for a potential union of our departments uh, in a, some sort of collaboration sense. Well, as I said, uh, we are having certain budgetary concerns if someone say, would be willing to make a donation, I am sure that those books could find a way into your possession. Perhaps those books could find their way into our possession, and then a donation might follow. I could give, perhaps, an advance at this yes. time. I see. Yeah. Kind of looks over towards Marie, and he kind of makes a very sour-looking face. Mother, something about who has the leverage, and then when Beverly suggests an, an advance, yes, um, yes, a small donation in good faith now, and then after um, something larger, yes. If the collaboration between our departments is fruitful, yes, definitely. Uh, part of my investigation here will grant me a large. Or sum of money that I could perhaps spend some your way? Well, 
that's very interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Uh, Bev, give me a credit rating. Just roll, roll, river credit rating roll. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, I think you you've got the best. So give that a rip. I I already spent my dollar today. <laughs> uh, I will spend. Uh, yeah, I want this. Okay. Thank That's a pass. Yes. 55. Hell well, yes. Thank you for the boost. <laughs> we'll say that you come to a suitable numeric arrangement. You provide a suitable down payment. And then he calls in Miss Burnish. Um, Miss, Miss Burnish, if you could. The other box um, with Mr. Ayers. Um, thanks. Uh, go ahead and deliver that to them as well. We've come to an arrangement. And she like kind of hesitates and then... Um, yes, Professor. And then, now, I was not lying. I very much have a budgetary meeting if I could ask you now. And he kind of like ushers everybody, yeah. all four, four, four of you out of his office, locks the door behind him and departs. But he does leave Burnish behind and she takes you kind of down the hall, <laughs> down, down a couple flights of steps, or a couple flights of stairs, and you get into a storage unit and she starts going through and eventually she will, in fact, deliver you said books. But... We're going to cut now to Pasadena, where Pastor Wood and Patrick Price are going to start doing some prowling around Pasadena. It's going to keep doing peas. <laughs> PP um, game. <laughs> PPs. Okay, so uh, let's go. You guys have the address, and you start heading uh, heading there. And again, you, you have no real trouble in finding it uh, when you arrive. Um you find yourselves in a neighborhood filled with basically new money Southern Californians. You can tell that there are these very beautiful mansions. Uh, they are not on particularly expansive uh, lots, but they are they're quite fabulous. Um, and you can tell that none of them have the kind of old... Uh, the old feel that you might be familiar with, Patrick, as you move about like Arkham and there's that that old sense of old money, like these like these buildings, these townhouses, these mansions have been here for generations and generations. You can tell that some of these buildings here are just a few years old, perhaps. It's got that feel. And again, the sky is starting to get darker and rumbling. And every now and then, Pastor Wood, as you look up, you can see like the dark darkest part rumbles here and you get a little little thought about the dream that you had but finding this specific place is not too difficult it's a very large and airy area it's recently built ample grounds and you can tell as you're driving past we'll say uh you just kind of do like a slow drive by a bit uh there is a main house uh, and then there's also a carriage house uh, nearby and you can see there's another shack maybe a gardener shack or a worksman's shack something like that uh, and as you're driving around the neighborhood, there are some other folks nearby. There's like a, as you curve around uh, to like the next lot, you can see that there is another one of these beautiful homes. There's an elderly man uh, out that seems to be sort of trimming hedges and things like that. And he kind of looks up at you and kind of just watches as you go by. And you curve back around here and there, but you get a general feel for it. Uh, it looks to have like maybe only one very close neighboring uh, house, but it is in a neighborhood with these dotted dotted mansions. Um, it definitely it definitely felt like there were like when you were looking at out there were at least at least a vehicle or two over by the carriage house. Like it wasn't like it was a it was empty when you passed by. What would you guys like to do? Are you up for this, Pastor Whip? You look like you're about to kill over. I felt better, but I I think I can manage this. We shouldn't be walking into too much trouble. That's what we thought the last time we looked at somebody. I uh, make sure my pillowcase sack and my new pistol are <laughs> easy to, to reach and use. They're loaded. Okay. Uh, did I give them one HP for resting? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That means I went up uh, 33% there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what do you so think? what's we the plan? Yeah. Front door. Say hello. Pay him a visit. 
like old friends. Okay. We'll say you drive up the extensive driveway. Uh, and you know, let me, I got to switch myself over to a different thing. Okay. So we'll say you drive sort of up the extended driveway. The carriage house is on the right, halfway up that driveway. And then the mansion, the main house is a little further north behind it. And you can see as you're driving up, there is like a little turnaround point as well, uh, just past the, the main house itself. Uh, when you rumble past on your vehicle, the carriage house, you look over and you can see that again, it is, it is not empty of people as there appear to be a, uh, a pair of vehicles that are parked as well. Um, both of you can roll spot hiddens if you would like. Uh, as you pass by uh, to see if there's anything else you notice. 37 under 47. Excellent. Uh, 36 Excellent. under 88. Okay. I liked, um, I like Patrick's better because he didn't come across like an asshole when he said it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was one upping him literally. I know. And so <laughs> I was defending long. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, when you pass by, you notice that there are a few folks here. Uh, some of them are, you can tell, are lingering or loading up something into the vehicles. You can see others are kind of coming and going like they're walking back and forth, uh, one or two from the, from the main house. You notice that most of them are dressed in suits, professional looking. And I'll say that both of you with your, um, with your spot hidden notice once or twice as somebody is lifting and kind of loading up what looks like a crate of some kind to the back of a vehicle, uh, a jacket kind of pulls away or so slightly and you can see that they are, they are carrying and they have, well, they have weapons as well. Uh, they do, one or two of them will look up at you and just watch as you drive past. And none of them like wave at you. None of them look strange. They just sort of look like fairly intimidating looking people, uh, but they kind of eye you down as you drive past them. And you yeah, come to... We're not driving into danger, right? We're not driving into it, but we're walking into it. I think you'd best keep a cool head here, Pasta. When, when you approach, uh, you kind of get over by that turnaround, get out, and you head over in the direction of the, the main entry. Uh, you can see that it is, it is it is a very large, not a porch specifically, but you can see that there is like one or two of these beautiful columns with an overhang and then there's, there's just a, kind of an elaborate uh, bit of not the greatest tended kind of tangled up plants here and there, but there are some plants. Um, but as you approach it, you realize that there is like no cover and you can see that there's a few guys who at this point are kind of leaning on some of the cars that you pass watching you and they have full view of you as the two of you head up to the main door. Uh, you knock. Yes, sir. Okay. So you knock. There's a little bit of time, but eventually uh, the door will open and you can see some uh, uh, a woman in probably her 50s or so. You can see her hair is tightly tight back with a little bit of gray in it. Uh, she has an apron. You can tell she's probably some kind of, uh, kind of house worker, house cleaner. Um, and she's like, can I help you gentlemen? Hello, ma'am. My name is Pastor Wood. This is my friend, Mr. Price. Uh, we were hoping to seek an audience with uh, Mr. Trammell if he's available. One moment, please. And then she closes the door. A little bit of time passes. More than, it's just like, you know, more than 30 seconds, less than five minutes. And the door opens up. And there is a man standing in front of you. I have a little picture I'll share with you guys. But when you look at him, 
he is a man of middling age, uh, extremely well put together. He is, um, he, everything's very precise. You can immediately assess like all of his clothes, his suit, his, his, uh, the shirt underneath, all of it precisely ironed. You can see his pocket square itself. It's kind of sticking out at just the perfect angle. Um, and very tight, tightly cropped hair, well combed. Uh, and he's wearing a, not a light colored suit, but certainly not like a black suit, uh, as he stands before you. Uh, and he says, can I help you gentlemen? Very like, expi- like a very efficient, very sparse, nothing like that. What do you uh, think? Yes, what Mr. Trammell, my name is Pastor Wood. This is my friend, Mr. Price. Uh, we were hoping we could uh, have a conversation with you if you wouldn't mind. He looks at you, uh, and you said you gave your names. Is that correct? Yeah. Sorry, Patrick. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Uh, Pastor Wood, uh, Mr. Price, and you're interested in talking with Mr. Trammell because... Oh, apologies. I assumed you were Mr. Trammell. Uh, Just about some past associates that he's had uh, in, in... Years gone by. And you believe Mr. Trammell would be able to give you this information because? Well, I mean, nothing has led me to believe that he would be inhospitable to friendly acquaintances. Well, I am afraid that you seem to have gotten Mr. Trammell confused with somebody else. I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. Both of you have a wonderful day. Oh, no, I, I, I can assure you we have not gotten him confused. Uh, we're investigators of sorts, and, uh, well, his name has been left on a lot of uh, unsolved pieces of thread, untied pieces of thread. Mr. Trammell is unable to assist in these matters. Have a wonderful rest of your days. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch your name, sir. And it's because I did not offer it. Would you kindly offer your name? As I said, Mr. Trammell is unable to assist you in these matters. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Patrick, roll a spot hidden. You know, only Patrick, because Patrick, you're doing the talking, so we'll let Patrick handle that. Little 42 under 47. Success. You do notice that some of the men that were over by the vehicles uh, that you passed by the carriage house have gone a little closer now. Uh, Pastor what? I think we're mistaken here. Uh, mister, thanks for your time. He just nods. Well, I apologize, and I appreciate your time. Have a good rest of your day. And he closes the door. What do you guys do? I'm next? Nudge, I'm nudge past to, to the guys that were closing in on us. Better leave. People what is welcome. it about old money that just makes people rude and not let you in the door? Where I come from, someone shows up and asks for a glass of sweet tea, you give them a glass of sweet tea. Must be a different part of town. I'm not used to those customs. Do you guys linger and have this conversation, or do you have this conversation in your way? As, back we're, to you? as, as we're, we're walking. <laughs> okay. okay. That's to the guys where I just come out. Can you believe that, man? <laughs> <laughs> and they think, you know what? I've never thought about it that way. They've never offered us sweet tea. And then it becomes this bonding moment. And then you all <laughs> start a proper short quartet together. It's wonderful. Uh, okay. Do you guys get back in your car and drive away, or do you try to do anything else? I think uh, at least start heading off the property for now. What do you think, Patrick? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So you get in your cars and your car, excuse me, and you start driving away a little bit. Um, if you both want to roll one more spot hidden uh, as you're doing so, as you're like over by the turnaround point, as you're trying to come around, etc. 
uh, go ahead. You can go ahead and do that. The higher you roll, the better. Like the better your success, the more information you might be able to get as you uh, as you travel. We have boosts if anybody wants to use them. Uh, you threw me off with the higher you roll, the better. And I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck, I actually rolled really low on this one. Uh, I rolled a no, 13 no, no, no. under I'm sorry. 88. I meant the, so the I better. got extreme. Okay, you got extreme. Okay. All right. Failed this time around. You would notice that, Pastor Wood, as you're, as you're leaving, uh, a few things. First, you would notice that in addition to this front entrance, you can tell as you're going back to your car that there is, like on the, on the east side, as you do the turnaround, and you can kind of see back around almost to the eastern side because of the turnaround, uh, that there is a conservatory, like uh, these glass walls kind of jutting out from sort of the northeastern, easternish side of the, uh, the building. And it does seem like there is uh, kind of an entrance uh, you can also see that there appears to be some kind of like servant's entrance and you do see that same woman who answered the door step out and just kind of chuck some liquid onto the ground like she's just throwing out old water. Um, and you can see that she once she empties that out, she writes it back and goes back in. So you would imagine some kind of like servant's entrance. Uh, and you also notice that there appears to be not too far away uh, from where the conservatory is. There is like a like a patio as well, like a small covered patio. It's almost like a pergola. And that looks like there's like an entrance there as well. All around the, uh, the actual building, you can see the, these very uh, vibrant, tangled, twisted growth of, of plants. Now at no point does it really look like anything's like rotten or, or, or in poor shape, but it doesn't look like it's well tended. Like next door, beautiful and there was a gardener actively working right next door and you can see pruning and shaping here everything has just got this little kind of a wild look to it and that is what you see you see like uh there's probably you would probably guess around four entrances uh here or there to get into there but at the same time as you're driving away you notice that there are um there are not just these uh these men with these uh very intimidating looking glares scowling at you. But with your extreme success, I'll give you one additional thing uh, that I have to quickly scroll to find. You notice, you notice one familiar face, Pastor Wood. As you see, there is a kind of a dark clothed man who is near the kind of near the back of the house um, on the eastern side and is being let in. And you notice, and you almost do like a double take and almost veer the car kind of off the road. It's Father Pierce Patchett, the man that you woke up in the flop house with. And he seems to be being led into this building, uh, the, the main house itself in addition to a couple other folks as well. Heavy set, red haired woman, a pair of Hispanic, uh, like a, like a young Hispanic couple, like a dark black hair. Um, none of them look to be particularly well clothed. They all kind of almost seem like in shambles. It's actually kind of surprising and stark to see their clothing relative to where they're headed. Uh, and, uh, you can see that there is like another, like there's a, there's another man. Uh, so there's like a total of five people being led in, uh, by a couple of those, those gun toting goons that you saw, uh, as you drive off. Well, Patrick, it appears that there's some sort of party happening inside there. I don't know if you saw him that first one, that, that man was, well, I suppose he called himself a priest. I don't know the veracity of that claim, but, uh, uh, did I tell you I had some troubles the other night uh, and I, I woke up in the morning uh, with that man nearby. I believe he is an addict of some sort to what's the name of nectar. Yes, it's a bit of an operation going on here. You believe they might be. Well, why would a man with that kind of money be bringing in? addicts of that nature it's definitely experimental this drug it's a new one 
Might be trying some things with it. Well, it seems like the compound's pretty heavily guarded, but there are a couple other entrances we might be able to get through. What do you think? What are the odds? All the people looking and all the is over. What about his neighbors? Maybe so. they're friendlier. They definitely have a much better kept garden. You paid them a visit. So maybe they've seen things. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. All right. So we'll say the car leaves. You turn. You travel to the neighbor. You saw the you know, the gardener, the worker outside, and you start to veer onto their property a bit. But we'll cut from there. And we'll head back to UCLA, where uh, you all have, at this point, we'll say we have like a little montage scene of you guys going down the couple different flights, go to a storage room, she pulls out, and there is a big collection, this big old chunk of books. They're all very carefully wrapped, and they're handed to you. And now the three of you have been kind of escorted away from the history of the apartment. Not like you're in trouble, but we'll say like as you're you're moving away, you have some Mm -hmm. small talk with Burnish, uh, but you have... A box filled with these books and you do notice that there is a label on the top that says for heirs we step out into the no longer sunshined uh campus of of ucla as it is overcast there's a, a light sprinkle of rain here and there but it's not it's not consistent but it's very dark uh, on campus uh What's next for the three of you? What do we think? Well, that's quite interesting that that was purchased by McDonough, but it says it's for Mr. Ayers. I, Dr. Key, I'm sure you're going to be just... Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Can't yes, read indeed. These. In fact, so... If, if we're going to get get these developed, uh, perhaps we can uh, wander back to where those uh, artistic folks were were hanging out. And uh, w- what are we thinking that we are um, maybe some harried PAs working for a small art house, perhaps that just need to get something developed quickly, or else we're going to lose our jobs? And oh dear, can someone help us? Um. These should stay in a safe, dry location. Um, oh, the books. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I can carry the books. Uh, and like, I'm probably not good at maybe talking to the art student. But I can oh, carry uh, the books. That, that's, that's lovely. And, and, and we're like Marie's, walking and talking as we're doing this. Yeah. Did yeah, you see how I doctored Dr. McDonough? That was absolutely fantastic. And oh, it between the two of you and you absolutely made sure that he knew who was going to be in charge of this conversation. And Dr. Keith, that was that was fantastic. Well God, done. Well done. I suppose so now it's my much turn. From Mr. Coney. Yeah. Um and, <laughs> And Maurice can kind of like moved on from like Massimo <laughs> at this point. Like, oh yes, yes, I, I, I do suppose that that's lovely. Okay, so I seems like it's my my turn to contribute to this day, and let's see about. Oh, I, I really do want to make sure that that whoever we find does does not look too closely at at these. And so she sort of, I, I'm in my head. I don't know if this is kind of period appropriate, but it's almost sort of this like. Um, now I'm losing my words. It's sort of like a one piece kind of like shorts kind of outfit thing that she's got oh, going like a on. Romper? Yes. Thank you. That, that was the word that I was looking for. So like some type of thirties ish kinds of things like shorts being more like a culotte style of kind of a, uh, Are you look that she's leg going Marie? for. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you uh, head back over to where you saw. is uncomfortable for reasons she can't <laughs> quite put <put> into <laughs> You you head over to where the various groups of art artists and art students were. 
Uh, you do see many of them have scrambled to get out of the rain. Um, you do spy, Marie, that there is a young man who has set up a camera underneath what looks like an awning outside of the building. And he seems to be staring, you know, like kind of pointing it out in the direction of what looks to be like some kind of a decorative glimmer, you know, kind of glimmering pond of some kind. And there's a few people that are around it. And he's just very carefully trying and like watching the rain come down. And you can see in the pond itself, like the droplets starting to hit. And he is trying to kind of take these pictures. Uh, he's the only person around that you can see that actually has a camera. Everybody else, it's more uh, kind of traditional mediums. Um, and many of them, like I said, they're scrambling to get out of the rain. Uh, and that is what you see. He's, uh, again, he's, he's, you probably peg him, give or take 20. Uh, young man, uh, very tan, uh, kind of has like a blondish hair. And uh, it's a little bit heavy. Like it's, it's not cleanly cut here and there. Uh, and he is dressed in relatively colorful clothing, in fact, uh, as, you, uh, as you approach. What do you say? So she's going to kind of quietly approach, like she's being respectful of the fact that he's kind of like lining up this, you know, like perfect shot and is kind of about to take it. And so she'll kind of wait for the moment when she thinks that maybe he's kind of taken the shot. Mm. Oh, my my dear, what a lovely, that is going to be a what? lovely shot. Oh. Just perfect. Oh, well, uh, well, thank you. That's... uh. That's very kind of you to say. I, I don't, I won't know yet, obviously, because there's like a whole process to it. But what I'm really trying to encapture is like the motion of the water coming from the sky and then finding its home once more with the water on the ground. You, you are capturing the welcome home. That moment of feeling like you're back at home. Exactly. Yes, you understand. Absolutely. Yes, because there is nothing quite like that feeling, you know? And like, you really don't understand it until you truly leave. And it's something that I didn't fully understand until I left. And I want to try to encapsulate that for my audience. Well, I think that your framing of that shot was so lovely. That's Have you thought of a kind. name for that print? Is it is it Welcome Home? That is an excellent excellent suggestion. I thought something along the lines of perhaps wild stallions you know well what do you think that i mean what could be more perfect than because they're wild and free yes. the raindrops and then they return to their homes you know they do and the... no it doesn't you're right welcome home is better yeah but 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 now you but now you've really captured my imagination and and now I, I see in my mind's eye in the rain wild stallions and their hoof prints. Eye. I've never heard anyone use that phrase before. What a wonderful the mind's eye. Yes, that's wonderful. I usually just say like. In my in my brain camera, but mind's eye is so much better, simpler. Brain camera. Oh, stop! That's just oh, brain camera. Beverly has turned her back to this guy in like Marie's conversation, and she's just looking desperately at Shima, like <laughs> Shima has trying stars to stay in her eyes as serious as she can, and she's she... just, as she's just. He is Can so I? attractive. It's ridiculous. It's, I, it I am laughing say. my ass off, but Shima is just like completely starstruck and like, wow. Beth that has is morals incredible. and he's a student, so she turns away. He has like 150 charisma. <laughs> like 
any intelligence. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god. What? Has, has to watch out for herself. She could be in trouble. Um. So, but since <laughs> the rain did start. She does. Yeah. Uh, like go to take the box of books from Shima and like mm-hmm. give her some cash to go get us umbrellas because she definitely wants to be sure nothing gets these books wet. Okay. I mean, the books are extremely well wrapped and taken care oh, of. Oh, perfect. Like, like saran yeah, wrap, like, the whole nine yards. You don't think, unless it like there's a torrential downpour, th- th- there's probably going to be an issue. And like you're, okay. they're in a bot. So you, you probably don't think you need it too much. But if it does start to pour, then you have other issues. So yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. she's just looking at Shima, like keeping direct eye contact. Like, I have to ignore this man. I'm sorry. Shima is not. Marie's on her own. Compunction. <laughs> <laughs> and he like stands out in front of the camera for a moment and he looks up come home stallions oh just come home. stay stay Team right there I, I can I can oh just God. just give me a second just go right 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 back where you were right that there. was oh 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 just oh hold on hold hold on like the, okay yes just 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 turn just a little bit this way just with my yes that, that, that's great that Perfect. And so then she's taking like his picture. Are you yes. using his okay. you're using his it. camera? Or using the camera that you have? No, his camera. Okay. Well, you know how to use a camera? Most folks yes. around here are very well, they don't understand. They're all traditionalists, you know? They don't appreciate the avant garde medium of photography. It is not brand new, but new enough that so many pictures that are being taken are pictures that have never been taken before. Have you thought about that? And it is, it is like you're capturing time, you know, like you're, you're looking at time that has gone and you found a way to capture it like in a bottle, you know, and like it's there and then, and you can look at it. It's, it's a, it's a window to the past. As soon as you take the oh picture, my gosh. it's that history. Could, a window to the past, mind's eye. Are you like a poet? No, and, and she, you know, sort of blood. No, 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 no. But if I, I just, you know, what would be just delightful? Uh, wh- what? If we could see what you just created. If we could see the wild stallions. Do, do you uh, do you have a uh, places here on campus to? To develop them? Well, yeah, I mean, they, it's really like a janitor closet, but I've repurposed it, you know? And they wow. allow me, and a few others, I'm not the only one, but yeah. Yeah, it, it'll take it, a little time, though. It's like of course, not instant. Of, but, what, but, but what art isn't worth the time it takes? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes, is that, you is understand. That, and, and she sort of does this sort of over overcompensated, oh, um, would that be something that you could show me, perhaps? How the the process of this? Roll a charm test, Marie. <laughs> uh, okay. Trying to roll under 72. Um it's like a boost, just mm-hmm. in case I rolled a two under 72. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two under 72? <laughs> yeah. It would be my pleasure. Yes. This way. And he like gets, get, grabs his camera, gets a stand. He kind of starts leading you into the nearest building. She just turns halls. around toward the other two and just sort of winks at them and just sort of like. <laughs> and he goes over to down the hall to a janitor's closet, opens it up, and then he pulls like a small sign that he hangs on the outside. And now it says dark room on it. 
and he has all these different like things laid out. There's there's still janitor's tools in the corners here and there, but he has like this big table laid out with various in some clothes lines kind of going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. He's like, it's very, it's going to take some time, but it's truly magical what happens. And so he starts, he, he shuts the light off. Don't be afraid. I'm not weird. And then he starts going through You're the here. process. Why, why ever would I be afraid? Oh, I just said weird. Are, are you afraid of me? No, no. I'm just saying, why would I be afraid? You're here. I'm, I'm not here in this closet by myself. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, right. Okay, but I'm I'm a pacifist, so if like something did happen, uh, just so you know, I wouldn't want to engage in violence. Let me just make the magic, okay? Yes, 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 dude, yes. And she's kind of like looking over his shoulder, kind of waiting for a time where it looks like he... Yeah, he goes through the whole process. He's pulling stuff out and he's kind of kind of pouring these chemicals into these different bins you can see he's kind of he's going through the whole process i'm not describing the entire process because i sure, don't sure, fully understand sure. it, but he's going through the full process <laughs> yeah okay and so like and at it, a yeah. particular moment then kind of she will um kind of jump in and just say so i've actually the reason that i knew that i could take that picture of you in the rain is that i, I i've actually been trying to have this uh small small job for for this a uh, little small small studio and i they sent me to try to develop some some photos um and I, w would it be possible for me to why didn't to you use say that you are a feller fellow capturer of magic that's what i was gonna some people say photographer but I think what I said was more poetic, right? Absolutely. It's just, yes, Cap uh, capturer and so of magic. Because you got an ex like such a, a ridiculously good success, I'm going to roll it over. It would be my honor to share the dark room with you and to see the past that you experienced so that I, too, can thus experience it. So, so, so here's here's the thing with 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 that though. Um, it it is um, your magic is beautiful magic that captures the essence and the positive side of our life experience. Thank Unfortunately, you. the studio that I work for. They excel in the other side of humanity, very much the um, disturbed horror type of things that, that some individuals find entertaining, I suppose. But if, if I could have you work through these and, and I'll just take them I, i'm not sure that they would bring you the same joy that are you welcome denying home. me the right to see what you have captured so i have shared with you it is only yeah. right for you now yes. to share with me well there will there will come a time when these will be part of a finished product. But right now is not that time. And I want you to experience this in its final glory. I do want a persuasion test for this one, though. Yeah, no, absolutely. I want a persuasion <laughs> test for this. And he is a little okay. bit affronted, in fact, that you would deny him the yeah. ability to see the magic that you have captured with your... With your brain yes. camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Just, I open my mouth and the stupidity just comes out. <laughs> I love this so much. 
Um, so okay, so I'm gonna. We gotta have a Keanu character at some point. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so All right, I'm good. taking an audience for this one as well because I really, really, really want to succeed, and I'm fine. It's a fifty under seventy three. I understand. You want to wait until it is complete, but then. I would very much be honored if I could look at it. It would be oh. kind of difficult, though, to kind of do this without looking at it. But I will try. I know that that is something that you are capable of. I believe in you. Righteous. And how... I, I'm going to make sure that you get an invite to the premiere when this film comes out. Could I get somewhere that I could mail that invite to? Absolutely. And he goes and he gets a piece of paper and he writes out his name, his address. His name is Dudley Smith. And he hands it over to you. And yes, Thank you. please. And then he begins the process of, of go, the whole thing. Yay. We see a montage of him just moving about and an hour or so goes by. And eventually you start seeing some images. And I need you to roll sin. <laughs> As yeah, what you see sure. is basically of course. the four of the artists. Sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes two engaging in some horrifically carnal, non-titillating sexual activity with each other, with various objects within the room that you were in yesterday, uh, never posing. Uh, the, he, the, I'll say that the actual development is not perfect because he's having to not look. And so some of it's a little fuzzy here and there, uh, but it is nonetheless like a kind of a horrific thing to look at. But you rolled on 1156, and I'll say, because you I have did. seen photos like this before, and because you were prepared, it doesn't really catch you off guard when you get them, and you quickly, every now and then, you can catch him almost going to look and take a peek, but then he's like, no, that is not honorable Dudley. And he returns to his work. And so after a while, you have, you have the photos. And we'll say, for, uh, for the sake of moving forward, as you look through them, it is very much a, just a collect. It's not unlike the photos that you saw out of the lockbox. It's just with this this group of artists co-ops in here. Um, one thing you, I would say, you don't ever really notice is the uh, the bruised, beaten man that Johnny stabbed to death. You never really see him engage in any, in, like, with the amount of fervor that the others seem to do. He he comes in here and there, but he's never, but you can always seem like he's kind of more distant, unsatisfied. Occasionally his face in some ways kind of looks, just looks like, like he, like he's not quite embracing the types of things that they are. Okay. And so we'll fade out of there and we'll return to Pasadena again. And we see once more Pastor Wood, we see Patrick, the two of you, are pulling up again one of these long driveways and you don't see any vehicles but you do see this man uh older man uh he's got like a straw hat on uh he is very dark skin black man uh and he's got a little bit of like his, his eyebrows and some kind of scuff here and there it's got some white in it some grain and you put him in his you know maybe his 60s or so uh as he comes up uh, but, uh, he wanders over kind of to your car as you guys start getting out and you can tell that he's a guy who probably works out in the sun a lot as his skin has, has been weathered a bit. And he's like, looks at you are and he's like, ah, oh, can I, can I help you gentlemen? There is something I can do for you. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, we were hoping to. Ask you a couple questions about your neighbor over there. Uh, over there. Yes, uh, the one right there. And yeah, I just point to the house. 
Uh, and it's like through what looks like the, a bunch of shrubbery and such. It's not like right next door, but yeah, you can see like a bit of it peeking up. Ah, uh, well, uh, I don't really uh, know what I could really do for you with that. Um, it, uh, I'm not really one for gossip too much. Oh, no, we we weren't asking for gossip. You see, we're investigators, and uh, our, our client, um, her, her father had uh, ties to the area, and, well, we're, we're just trying to... He passed away recently, and we're just trying to help give her some closure. You know, we're, we're not trying to cause any trouble or any disturbances or anything. I, I see. Uh, I'm very sorry for her loss. It's... Uh quite terrible to hear but how can i help i'm just curious uh how, how much do you know about mr trammell over there um either of you well psychology test if you would like uh 29 under 77 very nice Speech. patrick under 75 both of you nice. can very quickly sense that this guy is extremely He's very uncomfortable at you mentioning Samson Trammell and at you asking questions about the house. You can tell that he's kind of anxious, nervous. Um, you, I would say with the extra bit, Pastor Wood, and your familiarity with questioning people through your past profession, you definitely get the sense this is, is a guy who has something, but he's afraid. You know what I mean? Uh, well, uh, I can tell you that there's a, uh, a, re a fairly steady, uh, ebb and flow of, uh, of ne'er-do-wells that, uh, go to the back door and they talk to, to Captain Walker over there and, um, I don't really, uh, I don't really know what he's a captain of, but I heard them call him that a few times. Um, it's uh, some, you know, well-dressed folk here and there. And uh, kind of looks around and he leans for in some, well, some, some vacant-eyed perverts, if I could be so bold. Um, it's not, uh, it's not a particularly nice place, and I'm thankful every day that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hampton spend most of their time away from the house. Oh. Now, uh, these ne'er-do-wells, they don't come in through the front door. Do they drive them in through the front driveway is there another access onto the property that they sneak them in from uh, well i mean uh, no i uh, not that i can say i think there's just the one drive and uh, the some of the property extends here and there but uh, I, I i can't say i've ever seen anyone drive up to it other than the way you would expect from the street. Do you have any idea what Mr. Trammell does for a living? He It seemed like he had quite a few guards, and I know security is not uncommon around here, but it seemed quite excessive. Oh, uh, I can't say I... Uh... And as you again start asking questions specifically about Trammell, is where both of you are getting the like this something about Trammell makes him uncomfortable. I uh, I don't know uh, specifically, but I believe it's uh, he's a real estate mogul of some kind, and he's made money buying and selling property, and at least that's the word around the neighborhood and uh, uh, I I'm sorry to trouble you about this I'm, I'm gonna level with you Are, 
there is a chance that our client is in danger and that Mr. Trammell might be the cause. And we're just trying to protect her. So anything you can tell us about him, it, it could keep her safe. Uh, he's kind of like hesitating as he's looking at the two of you. Did I ask you to roll like a persuasion or anything yet? Uh, no. You can do it, but before you roll, Patrick, are you, would you be helping in this conversation at all? Yeah, I'd be a bit interested in his gardening, maybe helping him with that while talking to him. Occasionally asking like a random question here and there. And like I kind of, like, and like as you intersperse like the more mundane questions, like you can tell he's starting to get antsy, antsy, antsy. And then Patrick, you kind of swoop in and with sort of something more, more kind of genial and normal. And he's like, oh yeah, the, for, yeah it's uh, the rose bushes are over here. I've been tending them for years now. And, and then uh, it's just, it's been my life's work, the, the array over here and kind of points over that and uh, come, come spring this, uh, this entire hedgerow will just be a bloom with all just, well, more color than you could possibly imagine. Like, like an artist's, uh, uh, easel, uh, with such. And so he's kind of, and then he kind of turns back, Pastor, what do you say? Kind of a more point, a pointed question. Go ahead and roll, uh, your pers I'm going to say persuasion, I think, uh, makes the most sense here. Um, that's what I wanted. Yeah. And uh, I'll say, boost. yeah, I'm going to take, take a couple boosts if that's well, okay. You can take a bonus die. I think yes. if Patrick is there trying to calm him, you can take a bonus die from, from that. If you want it, I'll take uh, one boost and the bonus die. Why not? Okay. I know you don't like when we double right. up, but I'm going to do it anyways. All right. Come on. Uh, with the bonus die, each. that is a five. Thank you, Lolly. I rolled a Lolly. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if he's a danger, but I uh, I know he's a very uh, well. He's a very odd man, um, and uh, there was this one time I um. Uh, <clears throat> Well, I saw him, um, I saw him in the gardens and he was, well, he was spilling his seed into the soil. I, uh, I would have probably called someone then but then I saw some cops that were talking to that fella they call Captain Walker so I just assumed that they were all paid up so I didn't really see the sense of getting myself in trouble and then there was the other thing but that's just crazy and honestly I don't really even believe it happened myself well no. if you don't mind uh i i'd appreciate hearing about it even if it's a figment and it, it might be of some use um well uh, as long as you don't think this is an old man acting crazy but there was this one night um uh, it was just about dusk, and uh, I this was after I had seen what had happened, and I was still, well, I was still weighing what should I do about what I had seen, and that's when I had heard the whispering, you see, I was... Uh, I was heading up to the house and there was whispering and then it turned to to hissing and spitting and I thought maybe it was just a cat or a raccoon uh, trapped up somewhere and 
So I headed over there to the garden patch where it was coming from and there was all this rustling and hissing and spitting and well, I mean, y'all are going to think I'm crazy even if you say you're not, so maybe I should just show you. Please. You know, this way it's around back. So he leads the two of you deep to the back of like his employer's grounds and passing by again, more beautiful landscaping. And he takes you to this section of the ground and you can see there's moss everywhere and mulch and such kind of lying around it kind of creates this very thick uh this thick terrain these unnaturally lush flowers and he kind of pulls back a blanket of the moss and there you see this calcified mouth that is frozen forever in this sort of state of a biting scream as if it's twisting the teeth tongue everything i need both of you to go ahead and roll sand tests at seeing this uh 33 under 57 okay one point for you being nine over 46 i failed so fail all right. That's going to be two points for you, Patrick. Again, you see me scratching yeah. my nose. That mossy smell kind of gets a bit stronger in it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you too, Pastor, actually, both of you. And so, what, uh, what on earth is that face? Well, uh, there it is, except uh, when I saw it, um, uh, well, it was hissing, and it was biting at me. And I, I'm not afraid to tell you that I screamed. And uh, I kind of tore my shirt, and I wet my pants like I, was a, like I was a baby. And the only thing I could think of at the time was my mama's holy cross. The one that uh, the Holy Father blessed, or at least that's what she said. So I ran back into my shack. He kind of points over a different part of the property with it. I got the cross, and then I ran back, and I threw it right in the mouth. And the cross is still down there, it, uh, that thing. And then as long as it stays down there, at least I'm guessing, I'm safe. So judge me if you want for keeping silent, but I'm an old man. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I am man enough to uh, to carry on a fight against it. Uh, and he kind of like leans forward and he kind of whispers and he looks over uh, against the devil himself. So uh, I guess now you can see he kind of like exhales. So I'll just lay that duty on the two of you or the Lord, I suppose. I can't think of any other reason why he would have led you here. Indeed. Uh, how far down do you think that cross would be? Um, I think it's a ways. Um, I never wanted to, um, well, to, to toy with it in a particular way. I, uh, um, I figure it's, well, it's just there now and no sense in risking it getting all lively again, but a few feet maybe, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't really, never really thought about digging it up, to be honest. Best leave it there. I don't see anything good about and that thing moving again. I agree. Agree. No. That, uh, that's all that I have to share. I don't want to 
if you're all going to ask me, I'm sorry for your friend who's in danger. And she very well might be. Mm. I get the very real sense that Mr. Trammell and, and Mr. Wa Captain Walker and whatever else goes on in that godforsaken house. Well, there's nothing good. But I don't want anything more to do with it. So I mind my business. And you didn't hear any of this from me. No, no, of course not. Uh, I appreciate what you have shared with us, huh? And that took some strength. Much obliged. Thank you. But I see it inside for a moment. Wash my hands. Wash up. Uh, I can take you to my shack. I, I don't think it would be right to bring you into the Hamptons home without their permission, but I do have uh, all the facilities in my cottage, if that as you wish. But that's fine as well. So yeah, he'll if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll stay here and just just look around for a bit at whatever this is. If that's your wish. So yeah, so you see he'll walk off with Patrick Price, take him to his cottage. You see Pastor Wood lingering, looking down at this field of moss with this calcified mouth in the middle. But we'll cut back to UCLA where Marie, you have rejoined Shima and Beverly. You have the photos. The photos are very much the same. And if you want to spare them, you can always not show them and just tell them what it is. It's kind of up to you. But if anyone looks at them, I will want a sanity test. So it is particularly like the fact that you all, I would say Shima at least saw these people. So it's a little bit different, but you, um, you are back at UCLA. What next I'm for you? I'm definitely looking at pictures. I'm happy to mm -hmm. be that San roll. Yeah, San up. <laughs> so and yeah, so Marie's just says her, you know, kind of fare farewells to uh, Dudley, and um, I imagine she sort of has them wrapped up a bit, and just mm -hmm. um, you don't need to if you don't want to. It it is very much what we had seen before with those individuals. Oh, in the house. Okay. Uh, I have a 63, which is a failure. Okay. It would just be a point of sand. Um, there is, there is, I mean, it's a different feeling, right? The previous photos you looked at were older, first of all. So the photography itself wasn't as high quality. It's a 12 year difference in tech. And so this is much more recent much more immediate and you recognize all of their participants in the locations and their entirety. And these very, these are the very people who kind of came onto you here and there and you interrogate them, you investigate them. You see the kitchen too, at, and the, where Johnny stabbed the man to death, like some of their activities spread into there as well. All sorts of different surfaces, all sorts of different, um, different kind of positions and entanglement and such as if they just sort of shifting and moving whatever they had in the space. So one point is uh, Jeff, that one guy that ended up uh, getting killed, did we get a name for him at all? Like when we're looking at his ID or before that, like basically what I'm getting at is, is that person Lee who Pastorwood was, uh, didn't, didn't, see but heard about uh, mm. someone who was maybe not in Denactra the same way he was. I think the only thing you guys took from him was a crumpled up advert, faded advert that had Thai right. lettering on it. Uh, I don't think he actually had proper ID yes. on his person. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Thanks. Okay. What is next for the three of you? Well, uh, I, presumably, uh, sorry to interrupt, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. 
Uh, I was thinking that uh, presumably like the thing that with this main death rate uh, took a minute. Uh, I would have liked to have um, gone to the UCLA library in that time and looked up Luz and see like the the singer whose name I'm probably mispronouncing. Oh, Luz from the. Lu- thank record. you. Thank you. I have a L-U-Z in my nose. So I'm like, that That doesn't sound right when I say it. Uh. Uh, yeah, I think okay, we so, had okay. gotten just a little bit of information about um, uh, Disco um, and an address in Mexico, I believe, from the record player. Um... I'm not sure that you would. I don't think the library would have any information. Okay. No yeah. Worries. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you did get a little bit of stuff, Murray. Um, on the on the record label itself, there is an address for uh, for Mexico, post office box, uh, the name, and a handful of lyrics and such. Uh, so. So yeah, that's all you would really have for now. Um, so you know it's in Mexico City, basically. All right. I, uh, what I, I did grab some of the nectar uh, while we were there yesterday. Uh, perhaps we might be able to find someone here uh, a little more in the chemistry persuasion that might be able to try to get give us some information as to what makes this up and then we would know if i remember correctly the akone family can't seem to figure out how it's coming into the city or where it's being manufactured perhaps if we could break it down into its component parts we may be able to identify where it's coming from where how it's where it's made that's a good okay. idea. Uh, there is, in fact, a chemistry department on campus. Uh, it was likely pointed out to you uh, in your tour with uh, with Ed Exley. Uh, so you're more than have you know you're more than welcome to kind of hurry through the rain and get over uh, towards that building. It's not that far away uh, from where you last were. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely uh, that's definitely a thing we could do. Okay. Uh, okay. Quick thank you, Infinite Monkey Tales. Thank you for the raid very much uh really 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 do appreciate it uh okay let's um so we head over new building you haven't been here before what's your strat as you come into the chemistry building like what's the what's the idea here that's a very good question uh well we need to what might be a reason that we have to try to yeah because thus far, Marie has charmed Dudley Smith, yes. the photographer. Shima has intimidated Hamish <laughs> McDunn. What's next? He paid done. Oh, you also paid. <laughs> also bribes. Got a little bribe. Okay, so what are we doing? So what are we doing well, here if, as you come if in? If we want to do the charming route, I think Marie is much better at that. But if we want to do just sort of excitable fellow student, we'll <laughs> be better at that. So. My instinct is to say we should start with Marie. <laughs> I think he did you're dress up today better. for it. Yes, you did. Marie looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, although, uh, oh, sorry, Oberon, maybe uh, just want to see Jeff do another version of another. Kind <laughs> of I'll do that, Royce. Yeah, like, I got, I got, I got fellow, something ready to go. It's not what you think, though. I, a fellow fellow student though could definitely um kind of bring the um I have faith in you, I think, seeing what you did before in Professor McDunn's office, I believe that excitable fellow student might just be the ticket. Okay. If if you and, don't think of me too much, it would be really good to end good my paper. It, it it would be. And so Marie kind of has the file in kind of folded in a handkerchief. And so she mm-hmm. sort of very carefully takes Shima's hand and kind of puts it um, wrapped in the handkerchief in Shima's hand. Should we present this opportunity to a student? 
we, we may just need to see who happens to be on campus today. We will never know when we kind of wander through the halls who we might who we might find. I, I do believe a student might ask fewer questions about this and be excited for the opportunity. Perhaps offering a uh, publication in their name, getting a maybe a second or third authorship on a paper. But Ms. Oberon, you would know much more about that than I. And presumably Shamad does, even if my toy doesn't. <laughs> mm. Which of you has the lowest luck? Uh, I have 54. 54. I have 76. 76. <laughs> 29. Roll a 29 uh, luck test there, Marie, please. Hell yes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's great. I've been rolling all the things that I'm fantastic at this session. So this is, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's a 90. Oh no, it's a 98. Oh, oh no, I okay. just got the two little skulls on the, oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> So as you all invade the chemistry building, uh, filled with professional scientists and Marie is gallivanting around in her high fashion attire and trying to flirt and charm various people along the way. At a certain point, she feels a tap on the shoulder and you look around and there is a campus security uh, official looking right at you, Marie. And he's like, uh, ma'am, uh, I've gotten some reports that you have been, uh, well, that you have been distracting and harassing uh, many of our students and our, our faculty within the building. And I'm going to have to ask you uh, for your uh, for your identification, are you a student? Are you a, a staff member or administration of some kind? Oh, I can tell oh, from the look on your face that you are none of those things. Uh, Perspective student. Have... Well, ma'am, I kind of looks at you. You seem a little old for that. Uh, so, uh, if you'll come with me, please. Oh, it is. My, there's an age please. limit on. Oh, yes. Ma'am? Yes. Please come with me. Yes. And he uh, he escorts you out of the building. <laughs> uh, Shima and Be <laughs> Shima and Bev. Uh, the two of you watch uh, Marie get uh, thrown out. Uh, so you realize that you are down one of your operatives. Uh, what are the two of you going to try to do now? Oh. What, who's, who's next? Actually, who was next lowest? Was it Beverly? It's me. Okay. So what would your task now be? Well, how would you try? Like Marie has been going around trying to charm people and that has seemed to be nothing but distract and annoy people. Uh, what would Beverly's approach then be? Um, I think Beverly would look for a, a fellow professor. Uh, okay. And just inquire um, uh, if how she could um, perhaps acquire the assistance of someone to test the compounds of a substance for her um, for a student's report. Okay. Uh, okay. This doesn't have to be luck. Then this can be uh, this can be some other other skill. Uh, so I'm open to um, open to some options, uh, but. Um, you could potentially, if you're, if you're throwing your money around some more, but you already have thrown some today, you can roll credit rating. Uh, if you wanted to do, um, something, uh, something other than that, you're welcome, you're welcome to throw out another idea. Uh, you have a thought? no, no, uh, not that. Fast talk, persuade. All of those are awful for me. So okay. Bev may just try and throw some money <laughs> okay all right like could i do you recommend any students i could hire or are your services available kind of thing okay uh give it a roll oh absolutely okay as you are going to be on the names of both the uh okay uh why did you roll one. with a bonus die uh oh should i not have it's a nope. plus 10 if you are looking to use. Um, oh, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Uh, yeah. I'll reroll. Yeah, go ahead and reroll. 
I think you were fine either way because it was a 41 or a 1. So that I is think true. Either, um, I'll yeah. say, but I'll whether it's 40. a crit. Okay, yeah, we'll just kind of split the difference. So we'll put it like hard or extreme success. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, um, a woman will uh, step out of an office. You can see that she uh, is dressed very professionally, but she also has, she's like putting on what looks to be like a lab coat. And she has these very heavy glasses on, hair tightly uh, in a bun, but you can see it's fraying at the sides. She has like a, a, a bundle of papers uh, and she's coming at an office and it says Elizabeth Granley. Uh, and it's got like all of her degrees and such on it. Mm -hmm. And she nearly bumps into you. Oh, excuse me. I'm so, I'm so very sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh, my, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Um, uh, sorry to, to bother you, but I was hoping I could get some assistance in identifying um, the main components of a substance. I was, I was, uh, would you be able to assist me with this? Um, she kind of looks around, very clearly uncomfortable uh, with having to talk to a person. Um, uh, 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 I well, uh, what is this, what is this regarding? Um, I could pay for your time. Uh, um, it's for, uh, one of my students' papers. They've identified a new drug I'm on the, the back waving. <laughs> oh, 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 hello. She seems frightening. Um, uh. She's very uh, sweet. Um, yeah, but, uh, uh yeah, uh. Kittens are sweet. That looks like a tiger. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, um, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, what kind of, what's that, 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 uh, can I see the substance? Uh, we don't normally uh, rent out our lap. Oh, goodness. I shouldn't have had that extra. Oh, piece of cheese at lunch. Oh, goodness. Uh, uh, um, so uh, weird. And, and she will hand it. Please be careful. Um, uh, as again, we oh, don't know what it is. Interesting. Uh, well, I do have a little. Oh, I do have a little bit of time. Uh, for a, you're you're a, you're a teacher here. You're a, uh, what department is this? Are you from? Oh. Oh, I'm oh. from a visiting um, uh, university. I'm from Miskatonic. So, I'm out here on holiday. But the Pursuit of knowledge never stops. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Miskatonic, Miskatonic. Oh, liberal arts, I think, more than anything, but I'm glad to help. Uh, um, I have a little bit of time. Uh, uh, uh follow Could me. Could we Come. get you anything? Uh, uh, it'll pass. It'll pass. Uh, and she, like, starts to push past you and walk down. Oh, come, come, come on. You two, uh, well, okay, yeah, you can come too. Uh, she get away. Um, and so she'll lead you, Dr. Granley will, uh, to a laboratory. Um, and you can see that there are, uh, you know, there are all manner of various devices in here. Um, flasks, chemical equipment, microscopes, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, she kind of looks to you. Oh, do either of you have uh, any experience with uh, chemistry or... Is this biological? Is it? Uh, I do have some background in biology, but uh, I wasn't sure if I thought perhaps chemistry might be best. Well, um, there's a, they certainly overlap. Um, well, uh, you know, how you do you know your, uh, you know your way around? Uh, I can assist. Uh, yeah, it would be fine. Uh, that would be fine. And she uh, takes a, takes the nectar vial and she starts running it through a series of uh, like she puts it on like a little little plaque she starts kind of looking at it oh this is very interesting oh that's very curious indeed and then uh where did you say you found this so this is actually on the streets people are imbibing this oh my oh yes. goodness uh this is um this is a narcotic oh. Uh, we're unsure exactly. Uh, we haven't found, uh, uh, at least my police contacts haven't discovered a drug den. Uh, so we're unsure at this time. Oh my, that sounds horrific. Uh, well, uh, if you could hand me right over there, that bottle there. 
and like you can't and reach it. And, she does, like, and yeah. she's got like Shima like on the side. So we're like dictating notes to Shima as we're doing mm -hmm. all this nonsense. Frantically dignum. So, yeah, you go through uh, the process. We'll say montage science uh, happens, and various measurements of flasks and jars, and putting things down onto tiny little. Uh, uh, tiny little plaques, looking through mm -hmm. microscopes, dotting some sweat from the brow, wincing. Soderbergh <sighs> with all the different windows. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> <laughs> the Tarantino camera oh, angles, yes. just <laughs> random corners. <laughs> and <laughs> and eventually, and the whole time she's been kind of filling you in and kind of talking, well, I must say this is quite a fascinating fight. Um, I... Uh, I'm so very sorry. D Professor, oh my goodness, where are my manners? Oh, uh, my name is Professor Key. And yours? Yeah. I, oh. I, I, we just got so excited oh, in the science. Did I not give it? I'm so very sorry. Dr. Granley. Anyhow, um, enough with the pleasantries. Now, this, uh, this substance is very curious. Very, very curious indeed. I, I, I can't tell if it's biological or chemical um eh, i'll be i'll be very honest with you it, it quite possibly could be alive in fact but the patterns of its organization are well they're unknown to me and i i, I can't say i've ever seen anything quite like it before it's it's quite quite fascinating i i i i I can see a reason to say this is animalistic in origin. I can see perhaps plant fungus. Um, and don't call me crazy, but it could be something else entirely. You're saying people are imbibing this? It's very concerning. Beverly, as she's going through the data, She's showing you what she found as she's showing you and talking about, and you're seeing like the various, if you're looking through the various microscopes and such, I need you to make a sand test. Okay. Um, Shima, you're okay. You don't have to. Seven. Okay. Uh, yes. You're good. Science. However. <laughs> <laughs> As you can feel this excitement that is exuding from this very awkward woman, you, uh, you can see that more than once her eyes like go wide and she seems fascinated with it and she starts talking. And the thing is, though, for Shima, that very same wide-eyed, that very same excitement, that very same exuberance that we're seeing in Dr. Granley Shima, you see it in Bev too. And you see the two of them are rapid fire, manic, going back and forth. And Bev, you are positive that additional investigation, if you just kept looking, there's more to learn here. Like there's something more, not just more, but the the thought, the ideas that are potentially going We're back and forth. We're on the brink of a breakthrough. Something profound. Yeah. Indeed. And so she's like, perhaps we could send your assistant out and get us some, some, something to eat and we can continue our investigations. Yes, I can, I can start researching uh, more into the biological possible yes. aspect of it. Yes. And then we can compare. Absolutely, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, 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 should, fruit, shall I please. get you some coffee or something? Uh, uh, I don't care, Shima. You know what we like to eat. And and she's kind of, this is the most brusque that she's ever been with you. Definitely yeah. out of the norm as yeah. she clears like a portion of this and it pulls some more equipment over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Shama immediately picks up on that. Okay. Oh, uh, it, it, oh, okay. 
Um, Do you think that we should, uh, uh, what other tests would you recommend that we run? Sherman slowly walks out the door. Okay. And so the last thing you hear. Find like a vending machine or something. You hear the door kind of close and like she's like, hey, well, there is a larger laboratory. You can take it there. And then like, like it's just this constant rapid back and forth as the door closes. And that's the last we hear of that conversation. We will cut one more time uh, as I want to check back in with the guys once more uh, who have been over by Pasadena near the Trammell Mansion. The last we saw Patrick Price, you've been led inside uh, this uh, this gardener. He'll call, he'll refer to himself as Brooker. He'll lead you inside, give you full run of his of his his facilities if there's something you need to do. And we left Pastor Wood out in that kind of mossy field with the calcified mask. Um, the mouth, excuse me. Um, was there anything that you were doing when you went inside, Patrick? Was or is this? Was there any sort of ulterior motive you had here? Mostly, if I can get a nice angle at the supposedly Trammel House from here. Okay. Um. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, make a spot in. It's fine. I think we can do that again. Two this time I failed. Okay. Um, did you want to spend any luck or anything? All right. Yeah. Luck to just bring it down to a success. Okay. As you look over, you realize that you are staring at the... Uh, you're kind of staring at the... We'll call it the eastern side of the building. And... You notice that there is like a a balcony um, on the second floor that stares off to the south. And as you look over, you can see that there is a man uh, standing on that balcony. It's not the same man who answered the door. Uh, it is, again, a man in you know middle aged or so. And you can tell that he has on, he's like wearing a, a robe um, and he's relatively slender, relatively tall. Uh, and you can say he's got like this sort of dark, re- like you would think kind of well cropped hair. But as you look at it, you realize that like the wind is kind of doing crazy things to it. And that's when, as you're looking, you notice that he is sorry to say, furiously masturbating. And his hair is kind of going absolutely wild. And he is standing free as the wind is sort of moving the the robe around. Uh, And he is just looking out. And that is what you see as you stare over in that direction. Do you do anything with that? Oh, (laughs) my. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. When in Rome. Hey, well, oh goodness! See a Brooker. You've seen this before. I, I don't let my uh, eyes usually drift in that direction. Sometimes it's him. Sometimes it's others. Sometimes it's many others and him. Sometimes I hear things at night. Sometimes I hear things during the day. All manner of people go in there. It's not Christian. Whatever they're doing, it's carnal. It's sinful. You can see kind of like sort of makes some kind of motion, kind of looks up at the sky. Yeah. He, uh, he is not a good man, I'm afraid. Well, I think I'm about finished up here. Yeah. Well, we can fetch your friend, and it might be a good idea if you all were to leave the property, as I don't want any of his Captain Walker's uh, men to uh, to notice you here. That'd be best for all of us. Thank you. And then we'll cut back to Pastor Wood, who last we saw was standing here 
The sky is dark. You can see the rain is about to open up. You can see the clouds on the horizon have begun to kind of almost funnel the slightest bit. And there is a slight tremor to the earth. Very, very slight. Or maybe it's just your imagination. But you're staring down at this mouth twisted and gnarled. What do you do, Pastor? Could you give me another description of the mouth? Like, you said it's calcified. Is it like... Yeah. Uh, is it connected to anything? To the earth. It's like, it's. think of it like a, um, it's basically like a fossilized piece of, it's not like cement or concrete, but it has that kind of look to it. And as if part of the earth around it has also been like, there's like a, ch it's essentially like there's a chunk of calcified earth or cement or concrete. Uh, and this mouth is almost looking up at you uh, in this frozen state of this gnashing. And it looks very much like the mouth that you saw in the wallpaper back at Joy Grove in Savannah. Uh, but there's a couple feet, maybe two, three feet in terms of its diameter or so. And then you think that that same calcification goes deeper in. And all around it is moss and like extraordinary lush flowers and vegetation. I, I do want to just like, dig a little bit at the sides, see how deep it goes. It, okay. Not like I'm going all the way down if it's like really deep, but I just want to yeah. check. I think that's okay. Um, I think you could probably dig so far as to it's a couple feet deep, but not too bad. You're pretty sure as you're digging that you could probably crush it up or dig it out uh, as you can feel yourself eventually as you're digging down the side of it you can feel it taper off underneath as if you've kind of reached the end and it probably it probably wouldn't take much difficulty it would take a little bit of time but it probably wouldn't be too difficult for you to do it i'd like to get started doing that throw it in the trunk okay i'll say then with patrick distracting Mr. Brooker, you quickly start digging and digging and digging using your hands. Um, and you're able to eventually pick up. Uh, it's we'll say it's effectively the size of like a, a really big um, like Voss or like a outdoor plant display kind of thing as you lift it up and you can see that the 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 gnarled mouth is only at the top. Everything else is just kind of this mixture of calcified earth and dirt and other rocks and shells and things and you carry it over and you drop it into your uh, your vehicle and it's then that we see Patrick coming back with Mr. Brooker uh, and the rain begins to fall we'll go ahead and we'll end it there and we'll pick up next week uh, with uh, with Beverly going insane um, with Marie going to jail, uh, <laughs> with Pastor Wood and Patrick Price going to hell, and with uh, Shima going to Applebee's to get some food. <laughs> does anyone <laughs> need a? Cool. Does anyone yeah. need a doorstop yeah. or a really big paperweight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, so many good. intense feelings today. I oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Face oh, hurts goodness. from all the deadly laughing. <laughs> <laughs> deadly was so much fun. It was so great. And I, then, of I mean, course, like, everything uh, went to shit immediately after. <laughs> yeah. I just figured, like, yeah. we had, I had to do like a Keanu thing. It was so good. You it know? was so good. I thought I heard it. And then you said, while Sally said, I just lost my shit. <laughs> Did you get the reference, uh, Ashley yes. Long, to Wild Stallions? Oh, I kind of hope you don't, because it would just be joyful if you got to watch that movie for the first time right now. Have you guys? Well, have you guys ever seen, no, seen any haven't. of the Bill and Ted's? Oh, you're missing out. You can oh, hope they don't, and to. you'll be successful there. But then they'll let you down by not watching the movie, anyways. <laughs> so. <laughs>
<laughs> it's going to be like right before we're about to end the campaign. They're going to be like, hey, watch the movie. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> hey, we finally watched it together on Discord. It was great. <laughs> Yeah. It was long. Fine. Did you did you ever finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or did you just watch the first one? Oh, 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 no, of course God. I watched it all. Okay, okay. Oh, that a boy. So good. That a boy. All right, let's go ahead and <laughs> go to Apple. Uh, let's go ahead and hit me in the brain camera. I like that. Uh, okay, uh, let's do some closing plugs. We've got on out of here. Let's start with my trade. My trade. Where can we find you on the internet? I. And my two plays games on on YouTube, and I am trying to be a little bit more regular with uh, week play uploads at at this point. Um, I make system agnostic multi system tabletop content that centers the GM and player experience, and uh, you should check it out if you want to check it out. Fan freaking tasket. Sorry, I was looking. For, I was. I'm trying to get a raid up and ready. Uh, <laughs> Steven, talk about stuff while I do. That. Okay, I've got plenty to talk about. First of all, Lollygaggers have a new Discord. Uh, so the link is in the chat. Uh, because Melissa's awesome. Uh, so come join our Discord. Come hang out with us. You can talk about the episodes as they're happening. Um, people like me will post gifts that make fun of the episode and we can all joke together and laugh together. Uh, and if you join the discord, I am working on my own tabletop RPG system. I'm designing it. Uh, it's a weird Western and I am in play testing right now. And if people are on the discord, you can sign up to play test with me. Uh, so when you join the discord, you have to go to the rules and you click a little thumbs up, uh, to get a role and join the discord. You can also click on a little cowboy hat to get a play tester role. Uh, and then whenever there's a session available for play testing, you can just click on, uh, to click on an emoji there to get your seat. And, uh, you can play Huckleberry, a weird West RPG, uh, run by me. Uh, sometimes leave people, uh, here also join into play. Uh, so just come hang out with us. Cause we're a lot of fun and, uh, it, it makes us feel better to have more friends. Yeah, you That's think true. we're weird on stream? Wait till you get in like a game with us off stream. <laughs> yeah, I'm perfectly normal. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm still laughing at my my Jashalin. <laughs> Jashalin. <laughs> Jashalin. Yeah, All right. Ashley uh, had a merce. She literally was just yeah. carrying around a worst? dead body. <laughs> uh, he was a man unconscious. Purse. Okay, unconscious. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was also our no boys allowed game, so it was great. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> it's true. You heard it here. Mitra doesn't like playing with me and Long. All right. So <laughs> aside from that, uh, other things we got going on next week. Our next game is on Monday. We're playing some more alien uh, RPGs. We just started up a new campaign. You can see Melissa and Mitra in that game, uh, among others. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, Stephen, what are we doing? Uh, we are playing Princesses and Peril. I think yeah. that's right. It, or it's Peril and Princess. I think it's Princesses and Peril. I, I, I was asking the same thing last night. I, can't I remember love that. Rules you and the Princesses. Perils and Princesses. <laughs> yes. Okay. Perils and Princesses. Okay. Uh, we're going to create characters on stream. Uh, we're going to run through the introductory adventure. Uh, I think it'll take one session. It might take two. Uh, cool. But yeah, it's a lightweight game. Uh, and we all get to play pretty, pretty princesses. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. Uh, Thursday next week, then we'll be back to Simba Room, our dark fantasy RPG, uh, where a spoiler alert, uh, a sinkhole has opened within the town of Thistlehold and they're rallying to the defense. Mostly. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Friday next week, uh, we're back to Warhammer 40 K wrath and glory. And then as per usual on Saturdays, we have more call of Cthulhu. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, follow the channel on Twitch, please do. If you haven't already gone over to our YouTube page, adventures and Lala gagging subbed over there, all that kind of good stuff, please do. We have all sorts of games, both the ones that we're currently streaming and ones that we have streamed in the past. You can find all wonderful games there as well. Uh, but thank you for everyone hanging out. Thank you. If you're watching this later on YouTube or if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, feed, Really do appreciate it. We are going to raid Fablemancers because they're playing Fallout. And I we almost ran Fallout once. So we're going to go watch them play it. Bye. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Bye.